Mr. Cusack. You're on. Or Graham Beaver. Depending on which side of the state you live, it is a rivalry unlike any other for almost a century. A pair of words have viciously divided the two Bluefields. Players with names such as Jackson and Dudley, Bradshaw and Tynes, Graves and DeSibio have been just a few to show out for their respective schools and beyond. This rivalry is regarded as one of the best high school football rivalries in this country. And while the matchup has seen its participants go on to win state titles and winning streaks and district titles, this game's bragging rights will live on forever. Even with the 16 state titles between the two schools, this game, the Battle of the Bluefields, carries the most clout. The Graham G men come into tonight, the reigning Virginia Class 2 state champion. And on paper, they look as the favorite. Tony Palmer's squad returns with talent in depth and one of the most explosive players in the two Virginias. Across the way, the Bluefield Beavers look to end a two-game skit in this rivalry, something that has only happened four times before. The Dean of Area Coaches, Fred Simon, and his Beavers embark on the home sidelines this evening with tons of hope and a talented group of their own. Tonight marks the 97th meeting between the Beavers and the G-Men and the 85th time inside this historic venue known as Mitchell Stadium. Graham comes in as the early favorite to repeat as the state champions in Virginia, while Bluefield comes in ranked in the top five in West Virginia in the Class AA poll. An estimated crowd of 12,000 will gather, whether it's in maroon or wine or cardinal or gold tonight to represent their school. Two towns reunite to cheer against one another, if only for one night. Coaching staffs with rings aplenty look to match wits from just a little over 50 yards apart. This game, 48 minutes and maybe more, will shape not only each team season, but provide stories that will be passed down for generations to come. It's Beaver Grant, and welcome into historic Mitchell Stadium. It is starting to fill up. We are on Great American Rivalry. We're on Video Productions, and of course, we are on WKL1, WKLY 100.9 FM here in Bluefield. Zach Helton, Rusty Coburn. It's a pleasure to be inside this stadium tonight. Two teams ready to start the 2023 season. Rusty Coburn, you played in this game. You played in the state title game. There's not much that matches up against this game, correct? No, there's not. You know, there's something special about, you know, playing your rival, you know, kids you grew up against, you know, playing sports against, going to church with, you know, one game a year where you get to decide who has the bragging rights of, you know, who's the better better team, whether it's Beaver, whether it's Graham, whether it's Lucille, whether it's Lucille, Virginia. You know, I've played in the state championship, but there's nothing that beats this crowd. You know, you look up, you see your family sitting there. You know, you want to represent them, as do, you know, everybody for both teams. You know, there's something special about this game. That's why everybody comes in for this game. That's why Great American Rivalry Series is here. Yes. We're going to have a fun night tonight. Uh, Bluefield just wrapped up their warm-ups. They have headed to the locker room down to our right. Graham finishing up their warm-ups before they head off the field as well. You are listening to us live inside the First Community Broadcast booth here high above Mitchell Stadium. First Community Bank, free digital banking and express from FCB mobile app. Check them out online at firstcommunitybank.com and we're already in tune with the Citizens Building Supply. Countdown to kickoff. We had a great time down the parking lot with Citizens Building Supply, a Bluefield staple since 1907. We're going to take a break on the radio. We're also going to take a break here on the video side of things. We'll be back on the radio with our Chevy Cole, Cole Chevy Coaches Corner with Fred Simon. And we'll talk a little bit on the video side of things about some things to come as well. So we're going to take our first break of the night. You're in tune with Beaver Football right here on WKLY 100.9 FM, online at WKLYrocks.com, the My Radio To Go app, and of course, the video productions and Great American Rivalry Series. 
summer with the best deals in West Virginia at Stevens Mitsubishi in Princeton. All of our new Mitsubishi vehicles are on sale, including the Red Hot Eclipse Cross. Take $25.45 off MSRP. Or check out one of the most affordable and fuel efficient rides on the road, the all new Mitsubishi Mirage, under $18,000. Or take advantage of the best deal of the year on the all new 2023 Outlander, 27 23 below MSRP plus 0.9% financing available. Come see us at Stevens Mitsubishi in Princeton. Hometown Service Center has made big improvements to the entire facility, much like the rebuilding a great football coach does each season. You work hard, make improvements, and create a winning team. Stop in before and after the games this season and stock up. At Hometown Service Center, we've revamped our store, renovated our bathrooms, installed new pumps, and now offer a dedicated island for easy access diesel fuel. Come experience the hometown difference at Hometown Shell at the corner of Stadium Drive and College Avenue. Stadium, Juno shot field down below. Pre-game here between the Beavers and the Graham G-Man getting ready. We're about a little over 22 minutes away from kickoff. Rusty Coburn, Zach Helton along with you. We've got a great crew tonight. Let's shout out everybody. We've got a plethora of producers and on-site, off-site producers, camera people. Levi Barnhart, Marcus Burnett, Lisa Burnett, Butch Bounce, Matt Deal, Ethan Stinson back in the studio, Marianne Booth, Josh Watkins, Derek Wright, and Ahmad Taylor, our camera people tonight. Thanks to each and one of those for making this broadcast special tonight. Keys to the game. Well, let's see. Players to watch. Let's let's check out players to watch first. We've this this rivalry has always been filled with so many athletes, and this year, pretty much the same. <laughs> Bluefield, Sincere Fields. Tonight will be an interesting watch for Sincere Fields. Tremendous wide receiver. I think he can almost do anything, but he'll be back at quarterback tonight. Starting quarterback, and you started plenty of games at quarterback, Mr. Coburn. Tell me a little bit about – and you've said this to me and you've said this publicly. You were a defensive guy, and you kind of got thrown in the mix of quarterback. Tell me a little bit about transitioning to quarterback early on in your career. You know, it's a little different, especially with this type of environment. You know, you got to come in. you got to be confident. you got to keep your, you know, your nerves down. you got to be able to communicate clearly to your teammates because, you know, this is a very, very loud environment. So you want all the guys to be able to hear your cadence, be able to hear your – your play calling, you know, so for Sincere, he needs to go out. He needs to be calm. He needs to be cool. He just needs to be confident in himself. He's played the game since he was a kid. It's no different. You're just playing a new position. He's a playmaker. Awesome, you know, for him to do that. Ricky Dunford uh, was the runner-up in the quarterback uh, battle this summer, and he may get some run tonight as well. He's a good kid. He, he can he can sling it back there as well. And then you'll see Gerard Wade carried a lot of the load last year at running back. He's fun to watch on the defensive end. R.J. Harrison, the do-it-all wide out. He'll get some carries as well in uh, Fred Simon's revamped rushing attack here tonight. So that'll be fun to watch. Graham, on the other hand, Tydres Clements, if you've smelled – a football game in the two Virginias. You've heard the name Tydrez Clements. This young man, all state last year, player of the year, almost 3,000 yards, and he's poised to do it again. Yes, the kid is, is very, very good. You know, he was a former Mountain View Golden Knight. You know, he transferred to Graham because, you know, he wanted to be able to play on a, you know, a bigger stage. And looking at it, you know, you, you can't fault the kid. You know, he was defensive or the, Virginia Player of the Year, you know, as a junior, he's looking to repeat that. State champion, you know, the kid's electric. You got to hit him before he gets going. You know, it's going to be fun to watch him. You know, especially tonight in the future, and you know, hopefully at the next level. 
Hughes will be your H back. He will get a lot of work on defense. He is a tough young man. Floyd's a speedster. Jennings is a speedster. There's all sorts of speed on that Graham squad. A lot of turnaround on the offensive line. Both offensive lines are going to be young. That I think that's going to be a really early thing that we can watch in this one to see how those play out. At the moment, Amir Harrison on crutches, unfortunately. You know, that was a, a tough blow. For Bluefield this year, he, especially with Fred Simon's revamped offense, he was poised for a big year, injured himself over the summer, getting ready for this season. So it's, you know, tough to see him not out there. Out there for Graham is Sean Hughes. Both of these young men being presented checks by Great American Rivalry. They're both deserving. Let me tell you, you know, you're a Beaver guy. I'm kind of neutral here in this one, you know. But at the end of the night, all these guys are going to be friends. Oh, absolutely. You know, for one night, you know, you're rivals. You go out, you want to beat, you know, to win the game. But after the game, you know, we're going to shake hands, you know, wish them love. And then after this, you know, it's going to be arguments about who was better. You know, if this would have happened, we would have got you, you know. You know, that's what was, what's so special about this. It's honestly, it's, it can be family versus family. It can be brother versus brother. You know, this is a special, special game. One of the situations we'll keep an eye on tonight, Ubrino Isabel was a tremendous running back for the Bluefield Beavers in the 90s. I think he got a state title with Bluefield in the 90s. His son will be one of the main players on the Graham G-Men roster, and we'll probably see Ubrino on the roster, Ubrino Sr. Well, I, roster, I mean sideline across the way. Uh, uh, question is whether he'll be wearing sleeves or not because he's, he's got some big guns. But uh, – that that almost happens every year, you know. A dad will play for Bluefield, and a son will play for Grant, vice versa. What is that dynamic? That you know, everything's so close. I mean, right now, where we are in this press box, we could throw a rock and be in Virginia, although we're on the West Virginia side. Yeah, it's it's definitely a neat dynamic to this game. You know, your Brennell was you know a Beaver legend. You know, one of the greatest of all times. Ended up going to UVA to play linebacker. You know. You know, had a, or a chance in the NFL at the NFL Europe before, you know, it shut down. You know, it's very unique, you know, growing up a Beaver fan, looking up to players like him to see him on the other sidelines. But, you know, his son, you know, he's a, a junior. He's got a great look, got a great body. I think he has a chance to, you know, be very, very good. And, you know, it happens, you know, both sides of the ball, you know, or both sides of the state line. You have guys that grew up with Beaver guys. You had guys who grew up with Graham guys and their kids go to the opposite school. You know, it's it's honestly a family versus family game. This rivalry, this will be the 97th meeting between these two schools. You know, naming it the top ten, one of the top ten rivalries in the country really doesn't do it justice. Uh, and, and the fact of the matter is, this area, the population has declined over the years, but this stadium continues to fill up. Both schools use this weekend as, as a type of uh, – you know, class reunion type. I think there was like four or five class reunions going on in the parking lot before the game as uh, the Bluefield High School and the Grand Bands take the field. I believe the Bluefield High School band's about to take uh, the field for the national anthem. But, man, it is everyone. It's kind of like when you when you see these people out and you're like, oh, you went to Beaver. You went to Graham. And you kind of feel that just all over you when you when you walk around the parking lot coming into the state. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, Zach. You know, I've always said this is homecoming weekend for the both schools. The only thing we don't do is crown the king and queen. If you go to any college game for homecoming weekend, this is the same type of experience. You're going to see tailgate in the parking lot. You're going to see reunions. You're going to see people that played against each other, you know, sharing a non-alcoholic beverage in the parking lot. You know, this is honestly it's such a neat environment. We're going to take a break here on the video side of things. Uh, to cover up the anthem, we won't be able to hear it very well, so we'll go ahead and take a break here. As uh, you're in tune with the Beaver Graham game, Graham Beaver game, we're on Great America Rob, we're on video production. Stay tuned. We've got a great one on our hands here tonight in Bluefield. Football season, and Ramey Automotive is here to crush the competition. Our unbeatable lineup of cars, trucks, and SUVs will leave you feeling like a champion every time you hit the road. Whether you're driving through rugged terrain or cruising down the city streets, Ramey Automotive has the perfect ride to tackle any challenge. Ramey Automotive is the game changer you need to take your driving experience to the next level. It's your deal, your way. Visit one of our dealerships or shop online at RameyCars.com.
at Citizens Building Supply, stop in and you'll see the change is good. Not only are we improving the outside for our community, we're making some changes on the inside. This remodel includes a large showroom with increased product selection, like the Big Green Egg, Traeger Grill, and Benjamin Moore Paint and Stain with over 3,500 colors. Changes are happening to improve your home improvement experience. Citizens Building Supply, Bluefield Avenue, Bluefield. the best deals in West Virginia at Stevens, Mitsubishi, and Princeton. All of our new Mitsubishi vehicles are on sale, including the Red Hot Eclipse Cross. Take $25.45 off MSRP. Or check out one of the most affordable and fuel-efficient rides on the road, the all-new... Welcome back to Mitchell we're Stadium. On, we're on in ten, nine, eight, seven. Welcome back to Mitchell Stadium as the Graham G men across the way enter the stadium. We welcome you back to not only the Citizens Building Supply countdown to kickoff. 
But now it's time to take a look at the keys to the game. Friendship Key, our keys to the game sponsor this year. Open six days a week. From the popular soul to the new Sportage plug-in hybrid. Friendship Kia is always stocked and ready to sell. Friendship Kia in Beckley. We're dealing. Rusty Coburn, shout me some keys to the game for both these teams. Let's start with the Bluefield Beavers offense. You know, ball security is going to be a big thing. If you went to the scrimmage last week against Abington, they turned over the ball well, a few times. Job, they didn't hold on to it if they want to have a successful today. game. On the defensive side, the don't give up the big Three, play to the running back. To He's a playmaker. He's a the uh, Virginia player of the year. If you stop him before he gets going, your defense has a chance. Over to the Graham side, on the offensive side, the offensive line play is going to be key. They give the QB time to throw the ball. If they give the running backs time to get their lanes or get to the outside, they'll be successful. On the defense, don't allow the, don't allow the Beavers' offense long drives that result in points. If they can keep your offense off the field, they have a chance. I'm with you there. I think if the Beavers' defense can contain Clements and make routine plays, they're going to be all right. If I'm Graham, I'm feeding Ty Drez Clemen with a spoon. If that football snapped, I'm going to find a way to get it into his hands until he doesn't want it anymore. It's, this was going to be a fun one. Two athletic teams getting ready to go. That's Friendship Kia's keys to the game. Friendship Kia, open six days a week. Check them out online at kiabeckley.com. Friendship Kia, we're dealing. We've got some great sponsors this year throughout as both teams are already on the field. We're moments away from the Golden Knights arrival, the coin toss and more. Let's shout out all the sponsors real quick while we got a moment. First Community Bank, Citizens Building Supply, Friendship Kia, Cole Shepard, Blue Prince Family Health, Hometown Shell, First Sentinel Bank, Bilco Audemars, Stevens Mitsubishi, Harry Queen, Pepsi, MCMB Bank, Shell Advisory, Ramey Auto Group, The Vault, Cole Heritage Customs, The Rail Yard, and Bluefield State University. Captain's about to head to midfield. So we've got the coin toss coming up here in a minute. You know, uh, an old adage is always take defense. It'll be interesting to see how this plays out, but everyone's looking up at the sky as uh, we've got a great arrival coming up, the Golden Knights arrival coming in as they're bringing the game ball. So the fact of the matter is we can't start till they get here. <laughs> no, we can't. We don't have a football. But they're coming out of the sky, and uh, we're, we're pretty thankful that uh, – the weather cleared up for those guys because, you know, earlier this afternoon, well, earlier this morning, I should say, here in Bluefield, had a little stormy weather. And uh, we, the jump, I think, was in a little bit of jeopardy as, as a, it was a few things outside. But luckily, the weather has cleared up, and we're waiting the Golden Knights' ri arrival before the captains head to midfield in the coin toss. You were a captain. What was uh, – you know, what was the, you know, tonight actually Graham will be making the call, but when you were the white team, when you were on the road, what was the word that Fred Simon gave you when you were going out there for the coin toss? Don't mess it up. Don't mess it up. <laughs> <laughs> Fair you know, enough. You, usually it was tails never fail, so that's usually what we went with. Tails, and then you, you pick, uh, you know, you, you usually defer. Absolutely. Usually, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, if you want to, if you've got a high powered offense and you want to go ahead and, put those guys on the field. Sometimes you'll go ahead and say, kick me the football. Absolutely. So that'll be interesting to see how this plays out. Uh, Bluefield in the uh, black Jordan jerseys. Now, those things are sharp. And uh, one of my favorite things as a broadcaster, the very heavy white outline. So those numbers are very easy to see. Uh, Graham and the whites across the way. They've got the maroon numbers, cardinal uh, numbers in the gold trim. So essentially, right now, we are kind of paused as we are waiting the Golden Knights' arrival from gentlemen, out of the air. Unfortunately, our special presentation had to be called off through the cloud cover. And we've just received word from uh, PA the, announcer Rick Baker down below that the Golden Knights' arrival will United not States happen due to the, the cloud Knights, cover. They're going to jump onto the field with the So they're going to go ahead. Coin. So um, I don't know what we're going to play with. Due to cloud <laughs> we'll find one. We'll find a football somewhere. So... Um, it looks like the captains are about to head out to midfield. We'll try to pick up as much as that as we can. I know the referees are going to be mic'd up tonight. Uh, great West Virginia crew here tonight. We are almost full here tonight. 
Folks still filing in here at Mitchell Stadium. Juno shot down below. What a tremendous job the city of Bluefield, West Virginia has done. We've been out here with Great American Rivalry all week getting set up and video productions as well. We've been, we've been working diligently to, to get our spots here and get everything right for the broadcast. And, uh, and uh, every time we've been out here, the city of Bluefield have had folks out here working on the stadium. So uh, tremendous j- shout out to them. We are looking forward to how this stadium looks Ladies and forever. Gentlemen, captains for captains heading out to the field right now. Sincere Fields. R.J. Harrison, Gerard Wade, and Amir Harrison from Bluefield across the way. It looks like Sean Hughes, Ty Drez Clements, Miles Raleigh, and I think that's 53, Caden Roadberry. Yes, Miles Raleigh. Miles Rayleigh, excuse number me there, six, thank you. Uh, Rayleigh. Harrison. Rayleigh, the captain. And they're out there at midfield getting ready for the coin Harrison. toss, and we'll see how this shake out before we take our final break of the pregame. All the way, captains, our Sergeant Church and Clark of the United States Marines. By this time, you're just ready to go. Oh, absolutely. It's time for kickoff. Real quick, we'll, we'll kind of reevaluate the keys to the game. Rusty, you know, you were, you're talking about trying to contain Clements. Ball security is definitely, you don't want to give up any fumbles in this one. This is going to be a big game. Offensive line play for Graham is going to be big. Both offensive lines, I think, is going to be big. They're both very young. For Blue, for, for Graham, I, I, I think they've got to feed Clements. I think as Clements goes, they go. But I'll tell you what. If Bluefield can contain Clements, look for Sean Hughes. Bluefield, in my opinion, they've got to play clock control. And last year, a few few games were decided by a few extra points. Tonight, we'll kind of keep an eye on the kicking game for Bluefield. A couple of new kickers and punters in the mix, so we'll keep an eye on that. I know Sincere will do the punting, and that kind of gives him an opportunity to maybe even break things open, kind of do a little shifty. Maybe if, if he sees an opening, he can take off, or maybe... They could fake a punt or two. So we'll keep an eye on that. Francisco will do the place kicking for Bluefield as well. So we'll keep an eye on all that. They are going through the uh, coin toss procedures down below. The official know they've got a special coin for this game. Uh, I'm not special enough to get one of those, but maybe you are, Rusty. You may be able to pull off one of those special coins. I'm able to get you one, buddy. Well, I mean, if, if you could just show me what it looks like, I'd be stoked. If I get a picture, I'll send it to okay, you. Okay, fantastic. So, fans still filing in here at Mitchell Stadium. We're close to kickoff. It has been warm and humid all afternoon after the morning rain. It's been sticky. Uh, we're all sweating, but we're excited. This is the opening game for both these teams. Both teams' teams with a lot of promise. Graham, of course, coming off the state championship last year. Bluefield, 11 state titles. On the year, Graham has won the toss. Looks like they will defer. So Graham will defend the scoreboard in here. It's Mr. Official. And Bluefield will receive. So Bluefield will receive the opening kickoff. Graham won. They will defer. We're going to take a short break. We'll come back with final thoughts and kickoff here at Mitchell right here. On Bluefield Beavers football, football, WKOY 100.9 online at WKOYrocks.com and here on Great American Rivalry and Video Productions. Football season and Ramey Automotive is here to crush the competition. Our unbeatable lineup of cars, trucks, and SUVs will leave you feeling like a champion every time you hit the road. Whether you're driving through rugged terrain or cruising down the city streets, Ramey Automotive has the perfect ride to tackle any challenge. Ramey Automotive is the game changer you need to take your driving experience to the next level. It's your deal, your way. Visit one of our dealerships or shop online at RameyCars.com. Challenge yourself to the future you want. Open doors. Challenging climb. Bright future. Accept the challenge. Bluefieldstate.edu 
First Sentinel Bank has nine branches throughout the communities of southwestern Virginia and southern West Virginia. And for every locality, First Sentinel is all in with helping our neighbors achieve their financial goals. Endeavoring to be a partner in the growth and success of the people and businesses in our local communities. First Sentinel has built a 45-year reputation of listening to and helping the people in our community. Three on the dot, kick in the air, and the ball is caught at the 25, spinning away from one tackle and then bobbled up after a short return. We'll have to catch who that was. Kick is returned by the Beavers to the 32 yard line. I believe that was Smith. That was not Smith, that was Fields. Fields on the return to the 33. First and in there. First and 10, Bluefield from their own 33. We're just underway here at Mitchell. Sincere Fields and the crew. Break the huddle. Sincere with two backs behind him, a pro look. Tell back off the left tackle. Mix up in the backfield. Seal Fields is going to get dropped for a big loss. That was a broken play. And in there to take advantage of it was Yabrino Isabel. Broken play there, Rusty. I think a little communication error. Yeah, I and think Fields was kind of hung out to try. I think the nerves are getting to him a little bit. He's just got to calm down, know what's going on, make sure everybody on the offense knows what's going on, come out and get a little bit of a rhythm. Loss of three, second and 13. 11 25, first quarter. No score yet. Bluefield with the football first. Two receivers to the left. That's the wide side of the field. Fields under center. Long snap count. This time, handoff to the tailback. That is Harrison, and Harrison punches ahead for a positive gain up to the 37, a gain of seven, third and manageable. One minute in, third and long after the loss on first down. Long six, short seven here on third down. Bluefield will huddle up, a rarity in the game nowadays. R.J. Harrison out wide on the numbers on the far side. Under center goes Field. Handoff to the back. Up ahead. Miles Gerard Wade for a positive gain. It'll be to the 41-yard line, but it will still be short of the first down. Fourth and three. Two twenty. Clock rolling here first quarter. And it looks like Coach Simon and crew will send out the punting unit. Chris Edwards deep for the G men. Field sets up at about the third. Also deep to now Ford. Clements. Too many men on the field. We've got an early penalty, yeah. Clements and Edwards back deep ready with the flag. It looks the like flag someone has too many men on the field. And that's a early mistake, it looks like, for Bluefield. First penalty of the Illegal night. Illegal substitution. Illegal the substitution, Beavers. the official call. So that will back up the Beavers five yards. They'll be fourth and eight now. From the 36-yard line. Great American Rivalry Series on SUV TV and HBCU Plus. We're proud to partner with them tonight. Fields back deep. Clements. Back deep as well. Short, wobbly kick. Gets across midfield and then hops down to the 40. Chased down by Keyshawn Smith. And he'll down it at the 39-yard line. So not a great punt. But it gets across midfield. It'll be first and 10. Pretty good field position here for Graham. On their own 39-yard line. So the mistake early. Two mistakes essentially there. Cost Bluefield. An opportunity to kill some clock and move the chain. Pistol look here. First snap, Roberts hands off Clements, bounces outside, left side. He'll be forced out of bounds near the 43 yard line, but there is a flag on the near sideline. I think someone moved a little early. 
Dalton Roberts he getting his first start at quarterback as well, just like Gerard, or excuse me, Sincere Fields. And the flag is on Graham, so both teams with early penalties. I'll start the call. Offense, five minutes the backfield. Five yard penalty, repeat first down. So they'll repeat first down. It'll be first and long from the 34. Pistol look, Roberts with Clemens right behind him. Hughes off the line to the right. Now he goes in motion from right to left. Snap, back to Clements they go. He'll bounce off the left tackle, and this time he still contains it on the edge, and he'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and he's lucky there, second and long. All in the mix there, Jeffrey King and Fritz on the first stop of the night. Second and long, 9.20 clock rolling here at Mitchell. We're in the first quarter. It's brought to you by First Sentinel Bank. FirstSentinelBank.com. Remember FDIC. Pistol look and looks again. Nope, this time they'll just go a regular shotgun with Roberts. To the right of Clements. One receiver to the numbers to the right, all by himself. Hughes goes in motion. Blitz coming. Clements gets the handoff, cuts back inside, has a little bit of room. But inside a meeting was Ty Patton, Gerard Wade, and the entire linebacking crew for Bluefield. 8.44, clock rolling. Third and 10, very much like Bluefield. Graham in a third and long early. 35 clock rolling scoreless here in Bluefield. Right back where they started after the punt before the false start. Hughes off the line to the right, a receiver to each side as Clements is to the left in the backfield on Roberts. Play action, pump fake, deep down the sideline. He's got him in and a jumping catch made across the way. What a tremendous catch, Chris Down Edwards, but there is a flag on the 40. Edwards had to come back to the football. Roberts left it short, but all that won't matter as the flag will negate the play. Threw it a little short on the replay if you're watching, but a great job by Edwards to get to it. But this play is all for naught. Illegal man downfield by Graham, and it will be third and longer. Their second penalty of the night. The man downfield, number 17, was covered up and went downfield. He said Ureno Isabel went down the field, and he was technically covered up, so that will negate the big play. 8-12. Clock will start on the snap. It will be third down at about 15. Ball spotted back at the 34-yard line of Graham, driving towards the open end of the stadium, defending the scoreboard here in the first quarter. Edwards now comes out to the right. Jamal Floyd to the left. Hughes lined up off the line to the left as well. Isabel, the tight end of the right. Clements in the backfield. Play action again. Robert steps up, has time, floats it down the middle of the field, has a man, but overshot and incomplete. And that was Floyd, who he missed there, who had a step on the DB, Rusty. Yeah, if the Graham offensive line gives him time to throw the ball, they're going to sink up and make some big plays. The Beavers secondary has got to stay home, got to run, run with the receiver, you know, step for step, get a hand up and knock the, the pass down. So, Bluefield went three and out. Graham will go three and out. Dylan Nash awaits the long snap back at about his own 22. Back deep for Bluefield. Fields and Jeffrey King back to 35. High over end over end punt. Fair catch called for and made at the 35 and it will be first down and 10 Bluefield from their own 35. Two punts, four minutes in. No score here in Bluefield in the Battle of the Bluefields. They call this place the Madhouse, no special, but not much of a Madhouse quite yet as both teams still trying to fill each other out. First and 10, Beaver from their own 35. Fields breaks the huddle. Sends one out wide. That is Campbell. 
near the sideline on the right. And now a whistle will halt play here. As it looks like Bluefield wants to take a timeout. They saw something he didn't like. Eight minutes to go, first quarter. No score here in Bluefield. We'll take a quick break. You're enjoying the Grand Beaver game here on WKOY 100.9 FM and Great American Rivalry Series, SUV TV and HBC Plus, and of course, video productions. Stadium. We are live in front of a almost capacity crowd. Folks milling around. I'd say there's about 10,000 in here tonight. And it's been a defensive struggle so far. We're four minutes in, eight to go. First quarter, no score. First and 10 Bluefield from their own 35 after Fred Simon and the gang you their first time out of the first half. They come out in a different look here. Uh, Fields goes under center, two backs behind him, one off the line to the left, and a false start there. As that's definitely not what you want to happen, especially out of a timeout, to have guys unsync on the snap count. So a false start will make it first and longer for Bluefield. Yeah. So that'll back them up again. So that's the uh, second. Penalty on Bluefield. It's a two-piece so far for both squads. Early season jitters, and it doesn't quite help. The 10,000 people are breathing down your neck here tonight. So first and 15, Bluefield. Fields goes under sip. Now we've got a Graham player in the neutral zone, and that will negate the false start as the play was a pitch out to Keyshawn Smith. But that is halted early. So it'll be first and 10 again. If we had a penalty sponsor tonight, they'd be getting their money's worth. Graham's third penalty tonight. First and 10 again for Bluefield. Wherever you are, however you are, we're glad you're tuned in with us. Listening and watching this one. 7 to 59, first quarter. No score yet, Bluefield. First and 10, back at their own 35. Fields under center, eye formation behind him. Powell dots the eye, gets the handoff. Eludes one tackler to backfield. A second one cannot be eluded as the big fella, Amari Hill, gets in there for the stop. About a one-yard loss, second and 11. Made the first man miss, but Amari Hill, very athletic defensive player for Graham. Shedded his blocker, made the play. He's a 5'10", 265-pound senior at the nose position. Graham runs a 5'2". Bluefield predominantly will run a two-back, one tight end look offensively. That tight end to the left here. One off the line, two backs in a pro set. Fields under center, second and long. Sweet play outside field. That is Gerard Wade getting the pitch. The and he pushes up ahead across the 40 to the 43 yard line. Great pickup on second down, about eight. And it will be third and short. Probably the earliest big play is Gerard Wade gets tangled up on the sideline with the guy who forced him out. That was Jamal Floyd. Those guys know each other, probably sharing recipes down on the sideline. Third and short for Bluefield. First opportunity to move the chains tonight. Fields under center, tight end to the left. Two backs behind him. Hand off this time. Again, he goes to R.J. Harrison, and Harrison goes off left guard and pushes ahead to the 47-yard line. First and ten, Bluefield. Great look there. Harrison. Houston, Takes the handoff like a pro and carries Jibrin Elizabeth 
across the 45 for the first down. First and 10, Bluefield. 6.54 clock rolling here first quarter. No score yet. Ad Mitchell. Fields again, breaks the huddle. Linemen shift before they set. High formation. Harrison dots the eye. Fields takes the snap this time. The fullback gets the handoff and forcing his way ahead for a nice little pickup. That time it was Ty Patton, I believe. Number nine. Ty Patton with a great carry. His first carry tonight, six-yard carry, second and four as the Beavers are across midfield for the first time tonight. 6-10, clock rolling, first quarter. Bluefield putting something together here midway through the first. Fields breaks the huddle, one out wide to the right. That's the power side, it's the wide side. This time, fake to the handoff. This time, Harrison gets the pitch. A lose one would be tackler to 45 and falls forward. Up near the 43-yard line. That's going to be close to another Beaver first down. We were talking with Freddie Simon earlier this week. He has always been blessed with athletes. And it's like these guys know. It doesn't matter where I'm going to go, Coach. I'm ready to go. And Harrison, one of those guys, all state. Wide receiver last year found himself in the backfield here. He's going to get a blow real quick. As it's first and 10 Bluefield from the Graham, 43. Change is a little off center, so they're going to have to take an official timeout over there. As I think we've got a chain issue. That'll give the guys the a couple of seconds to breathe here in this thick, humid night in Bluefield. But got to like what you're seeing out of Bluefield here, this drive, Rusty. Yes, I do. It seems like they're trying to get to the edge. They're trying to get some quick tosses, trying to get some athletes in the space. Seems like the Graham middle linebackers are starting to play up a little bit on the inside, and the Beavers are trying to run away from them. All timeouts. Yeah, all timeouts here on Bluefield Beavers Network brought to you by Pepsi. Hey, when well, you got to take a timeout, grab yourself a Pepsi and take a break. Pepsi and the Bluefield Beavers, a delicious partnership. 526, first quarter, no score yet here in this 2023 Battle of the Bluefields, the 97th version of this rivalry. There's been some good games in this one, and this one's shaping up early to be quite the same as soon as both teams shake those nerves out. Down there, if you're watching... As uh, Jaden Francisco, the leader of that offensive line, getting a last-second word from his head coach before heading back out. First and 10, the chain is fixed. We're ready to go. Bluefield on the plus side of the 50 at the grand 43. Both fan bases on edge here early. Fields sets the offense. Under center he goes, a fullback and a tailback to the left. That's Powell. They'll pitch to Powell. He's got some blockers. He's got some room. He's got the corner across the 40. Tucks out of bounds on a positive game. Four-yard pickup. It'll be second and six. The big fellas got out in front and gave Keyshawn Smith. That was Keyshawn Smith. Excuse me. Keyshawn Smith. Some room to run. Number three, Smith. Great block there. You get those guards to pull for Bluefield. They're going to be able to make some hay on those runs. Second and six. Ball at the Graham 39. Five-minute mark. We're close to it. Another official's timeout. And now we've got blood on the uniform as it looks like Bruno Isabel has to head off and get that cleaned up. So second and manageable here. Clock stop as... Smith went out of bounds. Quickly, everyone ready to go. A little spread look here. Fields will go under center. Receiver to slot to the far side. That is the wide side of the field. Tied into the right as well. Field. Hands off of the fullback, but the ball is on the turf. Looks like he got it back. And luckily, it's recovered by R.J. Harrison. Harrison was at fullback and mishandled the snap. And he picked up about a yard with it, so it will be third and a long four. 4.45, clock now rolling. 
on the short gain as Fields gets the play from the near sideline. Jogs back to the huddle. Interesting call here. If Bluefield doesn't get this first down, but hopefully Fred Simon doesn't have to make that call as Fields, or Fields breaks the huddle. And since two out wide to the right and two backs behind him, Fields gets the snap. This time again, gives back to this fullback, and he is going to get gobbled up again. That is Hairston, and Hairston met by a few angry G-men up the middle. I think Rotenberry led the way. Hughes got in on the mix. And stop the line of scrimmage will make it fourth and four, and a decision time early for Bluefield. Graham will make some mass substitutions, and the be curious what Bluefield does as the play clock isn't even rolling. No one's called a timeout. The official there, I don't think anyone quite knows the situation here. We've got, I think there may be a flag somewhere. If they've got play stop, the referee has a chat, and then now Fred Simon talking with the near side official trying to get some confirmation on what's going on. The clock stopped for 06 first quarter scoreless at the moment. Bluefield with a short fourth and four here on the Graham side of the field and it's decision time. Now they'll start the clock, you would think. They didn't go out of bounds and it wasn't a pass. I'm not sure why the clock would stop there, but nevertheless, clock now rolling. It's under four minutes. As Bluefield trying to make a decision here, Coach Simon still talking with the near side official as the play clock down at 8, and I think they're going to let this go down, take a delay a game to give himself a little more wiggle room with a punt. Seems to be, no, he'll, he'll walk it down to about one second, then he'll take a timeout to avoid the delay a game and give himself some time to think about. So 3.42 first quarter, scoreless ball game here between the Bluefield Beavers and the Graham G-Men. Both starting their 2023 season. We've got a great crew tonight all over the place. Rusty Coburn, of course, my color analyst. He'll be with me a lot this season here on the Bluefield Beavers Radio Network. Levi, Levi Barnard, excuse me, is the producer for video productions. We'll see him a lot this year. Marcus and Lisa Burnett are with Great American Robbery Series and, of course, SUV TV and HBCU Plus. We're glad to partner with them tonight. Offside producers, Bruce Mounts, Matt Dill, Ethan Stenson. And then we've got four great camera people tonight giving you all the great sights tonight. Mary Ed Booth, Josh Watkins, Darren Wright, and Ahmad Taylor. So shout out to this entire crew. We're having fun tonight. A little bit of nerves early. But Bluefield in the huddle. Yet to show their hand here on fourth and four on the grand side of the fifth. If there's ever a key play in the first quarter, Rusty, I think this might be it. Yeah, I think the Beavers are in four down territory. I think you got to go for it here, even if you don't get it. You don't give them great field position. Hopefully they can uh, convert first down right here. So back of the shotgun is Harrison. Harrison, the quarterback, wildcat look. Avoids one tackler to backfield. Steel dragging tacklers across the 35. He is going to be close to the first down, but he may be just short. Great effort there by R.J. Harrison, but the Graham D, I think, kept him short there, Rusty. Yeah, it looks like he's about a yard short. But a little bit of a wildcat look for R.J. Harrison. He's a tough young man. He was not going down, and he drug Amari Hill with him. In down inside quarter, to 35, but a turnover on downs. Down. So we'll give it back to Graham. First and 10 G-Men from their the own 34. The scheduled for tonight has been rescheduled for tomorrow due to flooding in Lincoln County. Unfortunately, B. Bluefield didn't get any points on that one. But four and a half minutes wasted on the clock. That's essentially what Bluefield would want to try to do tonight. Shotgun look here. Roberts in the gun. Clements gets the handoff. Bounces off left, right tackle. Now he's across the 45 to the 50. Gets rid of one would-be tackler and falls out of bounds. Sincere Fields there for the tackle. A big pickup for Tydrez Clements. First down, G. That's a first and 10 for the G. 21 yard run. Tydrez Clements. Man, what a shifty back he is and a big carry for him 
the first Dairy Queen testy, tasty play of the night. Yeah, Zach, looked like uh, the Beavers' defense end got too far upfield and allowed a big hole for Clemens to get into and get some positive yardage. First and 10, Graham on the Beavers' side of the 50. 3.25, clock rolling. Here in the first, Hughes from left to right. Clements again, up the gut, off left guard this time. Hits one backer, now bounces outside of the 40. 35-30. He has got all sorts of green, and he is going to the house. Touchdown. Team in. 45 yards. Ty Drez. Clements' first touchdown of the year, and Graham strikes first. Very impressive run by Clements on there. Broke a lot of tackles, got the outside, saw some space, and took it to the house. It was designed between right guard and or left guard, left tackle. One defender get rid of in the backfield, and then he bounces outside, and he just says, hey, meet me in the end zone. Tyrese Clemens at 34 touchdowns last year, and his first here tonight. Dylan Nash lines up the point attempt. As Brody Sharp will hold it. Snap down, hold good, and kick in the air, and good. 3-15, first quarter here in Bluefield, the G-Men strike first. Tadras Clements from 45 yards out, it's 7-0 Graham here on WKOY 100.9 FM, WKOYrocks.com, video productions, and the Great American Robbery. Well, I gotta be proud of my g -Men. rebuilding a great football coach does each season. You work hard, make improvements, and create a winning team. Stop in before and after the games this season and stock up. At Hometown Service Center, we've revamped our store, renovated our bathrooms, installed new pumps, and now offer a dedicated island for easy access diesel fuel. Come experience the hometown difference at Hometown Shell at the corner of Stadium Drive and College Avenue.
apologize for that. I know we're off the air on the radio, but we're still on HBCU Plus and video production, so we apologize for that. A fumble in the meantime. Graham has taken over first and 10 plus side at the 36 and the spot pass outside to Chris Edwards as he moves forward. The first turnover has Bluefield on their heels with under a minute to go here in the first. We apologize for the technical issues on the radio side of things and uh, we'll get that worked out as quickly as we can. But I know we, uh, we still have the video productions and Great American Rivalry up and going, so we're trying to get the video or the radio side of things to pick up the audio feed on that. But nevertheless, second and short here. Roberts in the gun, Clements to his right. Hand off, upside, and Clements gets bottled up there, but enough for the first down after the initial drive. He'll push across the 25 to the 24, and it'll be first and 10. Bluefield there in the final 30 seconds of the first. We've had a fumble, and now Bluefield on the cusp, or excuse me, yeah, Bluefield on the cusp of giving up the second touchdown in the first quarter. So first and 10, Graham, from the Bluefield 24. Final eight seconds, we'll see if Graham decides to take a snap here as Roberts is in the gun. And he will, right before the first quarter clock ends, Clements off right guard, fights forward up near the 21-yard line, and that's how the first quarter will, will end. It will be second and long as we head to the second. At the end of one, it's the Graham G-Men seven. The Bluefield Beavers, nothing. We're on WKLY 100.9 FM, and of course, here on Great American Robbery and Video Productions. Football season, and Ramey Automotive is here to crush the competition. Our unbeatable lineup of cars, trucks, and SUVs will leave you feeling like a champion every time you hit the road. Whether you're driving through rugged terrain or cruising down the city streets, Ramey Automotive has the perfect ride to tackle any challenge. Ramey Automotive is the game changer you need to take your driving experience to the next level. It's your deal, your way. Visit one of our dealerships or shop online at RameyCars.com. At Citizens Building Supply, stop in and you'll see that change is good. Not only are we improving the outside for our community, we're making some changes on the inside. This remodel includes a large showroom with increased product selection, like the Big Green Egg, Traeger Grill, and Benjamin Moore Paint and Stain with over 3,500 colors. Changes are happening to improve your home improvement experience. Citizens Building Supply, Bluefield Avenue, Bluefield. Welcome back to Mitchell Stadium. 7 other in our score. The Graham G-Men with the early lead as we head to the second quarter. Zach Helton, Rusty Coburn along with you. And we apologize immensely about the audio. Uh, if you are listening, I know the radio has picked up the video productions feed. So stay tuned. We'll work through this tonight. But we're watching a good one on our hands as Graham is driving here. at second and about six from the Bluefield 21. Hughes gets the shotgun snap. Wildcat look, and he fights forward across the 15, down near the 14, and that may be enough for a first down. Hughes is a tough load to bring down, Rusty Coburn. First time we've seen that formation tonight. Hughes standing 5'11", 235. He looks bigger than that. He runs hard. He's hard to handle. He's hard to bring down. First and 10, Graham. 
We're just 15 seconds into the second quarter and another Wildcat look. Hughes again, straight snap. Off right guard this time, he's bottled up by the interior Beaver line and he'll get back to the original line of scrimmage, but that's it and it'll be second and long. So a little recall for Tony Palmer and the crew. We saw Fred Simon bring out the Wildcat in the first and here comes Hughes with the Wildcat in the second. They give him about half a yard. It'll be second and nine there, 11-14, clock rolling. Here first half, Graham with a seven nothing advantage and chopping for more. A beaver stop here would be big. This time the Wildcat will go to Clements. Straight snap in the backfield, missed tackle, and Clements falls forward for about a one yard gain, and it will be third down and eight. Missed tackle in the backfield, but Clements is going to be tough to handle all night. But the interior linemen were there to handle for Bluefield. Sub so here is Justin King, got a breather. He'll come back into the middle with 10 and a half to go first half, a third and long. And this is probably four down territory for Graham as well. Absolutely, I think uh, inside the 10 you have to go for it if it becomes fourth down. We'll see if they continue to run Hughes up the middle and out of the Wildcat formation. Play clock down to eight, seven, six. A little confusion in the backfield for the G-man. Clements will take the direct snap. And just before the play clock evaporates, Graham will use a timeout. Timeout, G-Man, their first of the afternoon. 10.09 left here in the second quarter. It's 7-0 G-Man and a big third down play coming up. We are in the second quarter, all second quarter. Uh, the Bluefield Beaver broadcast this fall brought to you by Bill Cole Auto Mall. For your Honda, Nissan, Subaru, Kia, Ford, or Lincoln needs. Look no further than the Bill Cole Auto Mall. On 460 between Bluefield and Princeton. Check them out online anytime, BillColeAutomall.com. We'll pass right by Bill Cole Auto Mall next Friday as the Beavers will take on their other rival, the Princeton Tigers, on Friday night. Make note, that is a 7 p.m. kickoff next Friday at Honeycutt in Princeton, so we'll be on there at 6.30 on the radio. And we'll make sure that someone smarter than us takes care of this radio box and fixes it before Friday. As, um, yeah, we can't even get it to turn on. <laughs> That's part of the fun, working through things like that. Third and long after... Graham avoids the delay of game and uses their first timeout of the half. Bluefield has used two timeouts so far. They have one left in their pocket until halftime. Two safeties deep. And I say deep, they're inside the five for Bluefield as Clements goes in the gun and now a flag before the play can even take shape. Looks and this like may be an illegal, yeah. Too many men on the field. And that's a tough one to handle out of a timeout. Yeah, that should never happen coming out of a timeout. You should never have not enough or too many men on the field. So costly penalty there for Bluefield. And that will give Grandma. After the timeout, the ball had not become lives. Therefore, you cannot have an illegal there we go so clarification no flag on the play as the ball had not become live fields goes back in and it will stay third and eight ball spotted at the blue field 13. wildcat look again clements with two blockers to his right they'll pull to the left side the wide side of the field he'll cut back inside nice play in the interior And that was a great open field tackle. Ty Patton, a great linebacker this year, and he holds up Clemens there to keep a big play from developing. It'll be fourth down and decision time for the G men. Patton last year, the leading tackler for the Beavers, over 100 tackles, and a big one right there to make Graham decide to take a field goal. It will be a 26-yard attempt, almost straight on. Snap is good, the hold is good, and the kick is blocked. Bluefield scoops it up, and they'll get drugged down near the 35. Big play for the Beavers as the kick in the middle is blocked. 
And that'll keep three off the board. Great defensive stand for the Bluefield Beavers. And Rusty, you hope that's a little bit of momentum after a great return to get them out of the shadow, out of their own goalpost. We'll check the replay here. And it right up the middle looked like, was that RJ? That was Gerard Wade. Gerard Wade, number Gerard eight. Wade with the big block. First and 10 Beavers from their own 34 with a little momentum in their pocket. 9-16, first quarter, Graham with a 7-0 lead. So after the turnover, Bluefield gets a little momentum back. And Sincere Fields breaks the huddle and brings his offense to the line. Graham with no safety, two linebackers over top as two receivers, one slot to the near. Lone back in the backfield gets the handoff, and that play did not develop as a flag was thrown right before the snap. Jeffrey King was bottled up. Looks like there was only 10 men on the field for the Beavers. Yeah, we've got another flag. King took the shot, but didn't have to, and they'll see what this is. And then, yeah, like you said, Rusty, looks like to be another too many men on the field for Bluefield. No oh, false start, excuse me, but nevertheless against Bluefield. So they will back the Beavers up. And it'll be first down at 15 from their own 29. We apologize again to the WKOY listeners. You're listening to the video productions feed. We're on Great American Rivalry and video productions tonight as our radio box decided to give up on me. I <laughs> There's too many people here. We can't throw it out the window. So <laughs> We'll have to figure it out later. First and 15, Bluefield from their own 29. Fields goes under center, eye formation behind him. Pitch, tailback. That's, that's Smith. Keyshawn Smith, nice carry there. He picks up six yards. He's up to the 35, and it'll be second down and a long eight. You'll see a lot of backs filter in and out for Bluefield. It may take me a little bit of time to make sure the right one's in there, but that time, Keyshawn Smith, 5'7", junior, with a nice carry. It'll be second, short nine, long eight from the Beaver, 35. 8.38, clock rolling here in the first half. Graham with a touchdown in the first. They lead 7 to nothing. Fields breaks the huddle. Play clock at 5. Got to get quick here. Under center, checks everything, gets the snap. This time, fullback gets the carry. And this time, Gerard Wade bottled up Inside by the Isabel back. and crew, the linebackers. The He'll push forward up near the 38-yard line. So positive gain, but it'll be third down and a long six. Ball spotted at the 38-yard to gain is the Bluefield 44. Clock under eight minutes now here in the first half at Mitchell Stadium. Kind of hard. A lot of these young men probably growing up went to the spread and didn't have to huddle, just check the sideline for play. And now Coach Simon and the crew now going back, going back into the huddle. Fields breaks it, and a flag is... The play clock hits zero, and that will be a delay of game. So a delay of game will back up Bluefield, and that will make third and long even longer. So neither team really helping themselves here in the first half with mistakes, but Bluefield there puts themselves behind the A-ball, moves themselves back or behind the original line of scrimmage. It will be third and 11 from their own 33. So a passing situation for Fields in what has been predominantly a running attack for Bluefield. Play clock at 10 as Fields breaks the huddle. Pistol look here. Clap, snap, look to the near side. He'll throw it up for grabs. He's got him in between two receivers and a great play in the defensive backfield by Jamel Floyd as he went toe-to-toe -to -toe with R.J. Harrison and knocked it away in complete fourth down. Harrison got between the DBs, and it was not a, not a bad ball, but Jamal Floyd comes over late if you're watching the replay and knocks it away. Great play by Floyd. So a punting situation here for Bluefield, fourth and long. 
Fields is the punter. It kind of gives you another wrinkle for Bluefield as they have an opportunity. If Fields may see something that he likes, he can maybe take advantage of. A late arrival. Now we've got some confusion again, and another Bluefield Beaver penalty will set them back even further. So the punt team off kilter here as someone was coming in late, and that will back it up even further. So a couple of tough breaks here for Bluefield. As they've shot themselves in the foot on this drive, backed themselves up after the block field goal and the turnover. As Fields will kick this away from his own 20. Clements and Floyd back near the 45. End over end wobbly punt towards the far sideline. Fair catch made at the 35. And that was Edwards, excuse me. Edwards makes the fair catch at the 35. And that was a little questionable. He had plenty of room to run, but Bluefield will take that all day. And it'll be first and 10 Graham from their own 35. 720 remaining here in the opening half of football tonight with the Battle of the Bluefields. Graham Beaver, Beaver Graham, doesn't matter how you shake it up. These two have not liked each other for almost 100 years. This one has been one of the greatest rivalries in the country, and we're glad to be a part of it. Rusty Coburn, Zach Hell along with you. We're on Great American Rivalries, SUV TV, and HBCU Plus. We're also on Video Productions, West Virginia. 7-20, second quarter. First and 10, Graham, shotgun formation. Roberts. Little option look, gives off to Clements. Clements pushes ahead for about three, and he takes on a hit as Tyquise Powell and gang pop him. But a positive gain makes it third, second, and a long six, maybe a short two. Nice little pop there by Powell. He is a tough linebacker. He will get his nose in almost anything. Second and seven, 6.45, second quarter and a whistle. And now we have an official timeout, it looks like. Bluefield, or excuse me, Graham will take a timeout, their second of the half. They didn't like something in the situation, we'll take it with them. 6.43, first half, the G-Men of Graham leads seven to nothing. You're in tune with Great American Rivalry. Video Productions, and of course, Bluefield Beavers football on WKOY 100.9 FM. Welcome back, quick out of the timeout. Out on the edge, Clements gets to the 45 and then he gets wrestled down as Jeffrey King and crew throw him to the turf a little violently. But a penalty behind the play that looks like in the spot of a hold. We'll see how it shakes out. This may negate a first down carry or just close to it for Clements. Let this shake out here. Holding in the backfield. So that does negate a seven yard carry for Clements. And that will put Graham behind the eight ball down to their own 28 and it will be second and 17. Six and a half minutes, tick of two over. Left here in the first half and Mitchell Graham with a seven nothing advantage. 
Three receivers to the wide side. That's the right side. And we've got another penalty pre-snap. And it looked like someone in black for Bluefield was in the neutral zone. So it looks like a neutral zone infraction. And Graham may get back some of what they just gave up on the hold. It's week one for everyone, including our radio box that just went out. <laughs> so apologies to all the Bluefield Beaver fans listening on the radio. But our man Ethan Stinson taking care of it, and we believe that video production's audio is on the radio now. So we'll keep you up to date. We missed a few plays, but I don't think we missed much there early. But we're back here. Now out of the offsides, it'll be second and 11. Roberts. Down the field's got a man wide open, and he drops it. Wide open was Michael Hell, and he had nothing but blue field air between him and the end zone, and he could not haul it in. That will keep that young man up all night. Roberts, good fake there, and just dropped third and long. Good job by Roberts on the fake. He had everyone biting on the outside. Third and 12. There's a great look at that play from Great American Rivalry. Oh, man, that makes me feel queasy. Receiving a slot each side. The ball on the left hash. And now a delay a game called on Graham. If you like penalties, you came to the right one tonight. We've got our share of them here early. It's both teams a little bit of nerves here tonight. Third and longer ball spotted back at the Graham 28. We were there a few minutes ago, it feels like. The yard to gain is the Graham 45. Slot and receiver each side. Hand off Clements outside. He's got room across the 30, 35, and he'll drag a tackler up near the original line of scrimmage. Across the 35 to the 36, and that will give Graham a little bit more breathing room with the punt coming up on fourth and about eight. Pretty safe play call by the Graham offense. Put it in Clemens' hands, don't force anything. He got some yardage. Yeah, he was, he was very close to shaking himself free. Nash back to punt. A couple of guys still confused on the Bluefield end as Fields and King go back there, settling themselves near their own 35-yard line. Play clock at 2-1. Snap, flag. Almost a block. A rough in the kicker coming up, but there's also another flag. The ball takes a Bluefield balance, and it's down by Tristan Haas at the Bluefield 40. But there's two flags here down on the field early. Let's see how they shake out. Did not get the ball, and the punter was absolutely mauled. But there was a flag right at the snap. So this may offset and set up another punting attempt for Graham. Great look here by Great American Rivalry. It looks like someone may be set up in the neutral zone and then there on the block attempt, a uh, RK, or R, <laughs> little off the top rope there on the punter. The Bluefield catches a break there. Illegal formation on Graham's punt team. Negates the roughing the kicker and will try it again. Fourth and nine with a punt. King and Fields back at their own 35 again. Nash awaits, he'll kick this one away at about his own 25. Good snap this time, a little bit of pressure, not as much. And in over and kick, King drops it, drops it again. Flag thrown, gets rid of one. Now two tacklers and meets a host of G-men up near the 35 and then loses it again. The ball on the deck, ball still loose. It squirts free and I think somehow the Bluefield Beavers come up with it. That thing 
has all sort of WD-40 on it. No one could hold on to that football right there. And there's a flag behind the play. I think it was an incidental flag. Wild play the there. King had a little bit of trouble handling it initially. Kicks it. And then the flag, we'll see how that shakes out. Ball loose. He, he corralled it, then met a host of G-men before losing it again. It squirts free, and then it's still loose, and it looked like the saving grace was Justin King. He said, oh, look what I found. <laughs> Zach, I think that was an incidental penalty on that. I think he was just trying to mark where the returner first touched the ball. That may be, yeah, flag. trying to drop the bing bag when he dropped the flag. So this be no, may be no penalty. And for the Beavers, they're lucky to come up with the football as the officials are conversing about this but man what a wild play that was and it looks like it'll be set up first and 10 at Bluefields 35 as Mr. Whitehat I think is about to make sure we know what's going on here Rusty Coburn knows what he's talking about, folks. That's why I brought you on. Every now and then. Every now and then. I said, listen, I don't know what I'm doing. I need some help. And Rusty said, I got you. So Rusty Coburn calls it from about 40 yards away up here in the booth. It'll be first and 10 Bluefield. 5.05 remaining first half. Graham with a 7 0 advantage. Fields under center. Eye formation with a tight end to the left. A little broken play. Fields falls the pulling guard as the backs were off kilter there. And Fields makes something out of nothing. Picks up about a yard, maybe two, and it'll be second and manageable. Great job by Sincere to keep his wits about him. He knew where the guards were going, and he followed them for a couple of yards there. The backs were going the other way. That may have been by design, but I don't think so. Yeah, it looked like a QB uh, counter to me, and he was trying to follow his pulling lineman, but he got met by the Graham defense. 4.35, clock rolling here in the first half. Maybe auto group halftime show coming up in a little bit. Second and long, fields under center, tight into the left. Slot to the left as well. Fullback, handoff, up the gut, and that is gobbled up quickly. They maybe got a half a yard, but that is it as the Graham D was there to force the issue as Tyquise Powell Picks up, actually picked up about a yard, yard and a half. Not a bad pick up there, and it'll be third and a short seven. Four minute mark. First half. Third and manageable for the G-men as they're huddled up. 20 seconds on the play clock. Josiah Campbell, JoJo set out wide to the left on the numbers. Little pistol look with a back end for protection. Fields claps, gets the snap, gives off to his tailback. R.J. Harrison, he's got room to run across midfield. Gets rid of one tackler. There he goes. R.J. Harrison, strike up the man. Touchdown, Beavers. R.J. Harrison for 62 yards. And we're a PAT away from a tie ball game. Look at this man run. <laughs> Two tacklers, three, and he's gone. The final 30 yards, he took care of him himself. Zach, and I think that was Gerard Wade on that, number eight. Was that Wade? That was Wade. I apologize. I apologize, Gerard Wade. I thought it was six. That was Gerard Wade with the 62-yard run. Apologies, Gerard. First time the Beavers have gotten shotgun tonight. So Gerard Wade with the 62-yard run. A great run by Wade. And a PAT coming up. And again, Bluefield special teams having a little bit of trouble getting guys on the field. Kick is up. Kick is good. Gerard Wade, 62-yard touchdown. And the PAT has tied it. 326. First half. It's seven apiece here on WKOI 100.9. Video Productions and the Great American Rivalry. <laughs>
Football season is starting and the all-star lineup of new Kias are here at Friendship Kia of Beckley. We have the playbook to help you score the big win on your new Kia purchase. We make sure you get the best price with almost all of our new cars priced at invoice. We have one of the largest selections of inventory. We have a roster full of non-commissioned sales staff and an any reason seven day exchange program. So get off the bench and get a new Kia from your friends at Friendship Kia of Beckley. Nobody be Friendship Kia of Beckley. Keep this G Men team from making any hay here on this drive. I think you got to keep uh, Clements inside. You got to contain him. If you let him get the edge, he can break a big play and you know, change his ball game right before the half. During the Ramey Auto Group halftime show, I know back at the station, Ethan will run uh, some interviews. He'll go through some scores around the area. Rusty and I will take a little bit of break. We'll try to catch up on some things going on here. No. Both bands will perform 20 minute halftime here. And uh, maybe catch our breath. <laughs> this one's been a fun one. G Men and the Beavers tied at seven with 317 left in the opening half. And Graham will start inside their own five. They went a little Wildcat with Clements and, and Hughes. The last drive before the field goal was blocked. And now another whistle on the field after the Bluefield timeout, and Graham may use their last timeout. It looks like Graham will use their last timeout. So we'll take a break with them. No one has any timeouts left. So this is the last break of the first half. 317 left until halftime. 7-7 seven, seven our score. Beaver, Graham, right here on Video Productions. HBCU Plus, SUV TV, and of course, WKLY 109 FM. Younger drivers on the road, Bill Cole Auto Mall wants to ensure everyone understands what we offer. Hey, y'all! 
What's up, fam? Phil Cole Auto Mall is the place to buy your next new or used vehicle. If you want to cop the sickest whip, you gotta beat Bill Cole. We have the best selection, flexible financing, and top dollar for you trade in. We got a dope selection, fire payment options, and we're giving top dollar for your old whip. Before you buy, give us a try. Don't sleep on us. Come vibe with us before you make a move. At Bill Cole, we speak your language. Hometown Service Center has made big improvements to the entire facility, much like the rebuilding a great football coach does each season. You work hard, make improvements, and create a winning team. Stop in before and after the games this season and stock up. At Hometown Service Center, we've revamped our store, renovated our bathrooms, installed new pumps, and now offer a dedicated island for easy access diesel fuel. Come experience the hometown difference at Hometown Shell at the corner of Stadium Drive and College Avenue. First and 10, Graham from inside their own five after the fumble on the kick. And the Wildcat goes right to Clements. He'll bounce off right tackle, and he's gobbled up after a short gain. He'll get across the five to the sixth, and it'll be second and manageable for the G-Men at their own six. Clock at three minutes now. Neither team with a timeout. And now we have a timeout on the field with an injured G-Men. So a grand player down. And they'll attend to him, and we'll take another break. 2.57, first half, 7-7 seven, seven our score. The Beavers and the G-Men here on Video Productions, Great American Robbery Series and WKOY 100.9 FM. Football season, and Ramey Automotive is here to crush the competition. Our unbeatable lineup of cars, trucks, and SUVs will leave you feeling like a champion every time you hit the road. Whether you're driving through rugged terrain or cruising down the city streets, Ramey Automotive has the perfect ride to tackle any challenge. Ramey Automotive is the game changer you need to take your driving experience to the next level. It's your deal, your way. Visit one of our dealerships or shop online at RameyCars.com. Challenge yourself to the future you want. Open doors. Challenging climb. Bright future. Accept the challenge. Bluefieldstate.edu. First Sentinel Bank has nine branches throughout the communities of southwestern Virginia and southern West Virginia. And for every locality, First Sentinel is all in with helping our neighbors achieve their financial goals. Endeavoring to be a partner in the growth and success of the people and businesses in our local communities. First Sentinel has built a 45-year reputation of listening to and helping the people in our communities. After all, we are local people serving local people. First Sentinel Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Located in the historic bank lobby in Bluefield, the vault downtown creates an unparalleled experience for our guests. Enjoy the freshest seafood, the finest steaks, exquisite wines, mixed drinks, and exceptional service from our world-class chef and staff. Relax at our Cellar Cigar Lounge. Unwind with one of our premium cigars from our vast selection. Whether you're celebrating or craving an upscale night out, the vault downtown will provide you with a luxury experience you won't soon forget. Little General Stores has been serving West Virginia communities for almost five decades. We are so grateful to be a small part of your lives, and we want to recognize the integral part of our operation, the LG family. You keep us going. Thank you. for a new ride and looking for the best value, come see us at Stevens Mitsubishi in Princeton. Mitsubishi Motors has the most exciting and affordable lineup of vehicles in America, and they're all backed by the best warranty in the business, a 10-year, 100,000-mile powertrain warranty. And come by and check out the hottest crossover in America, the all-new 2022 Mitsubishi Outlander. They are awesome. So come see us at Stevens Mitsubishi in Princeton. Mitsubishi Motors, drive your ambition. After halftime with 2.57 remaining in this opening half, 7-7 our score. 
Clements with an early touchdown in the first 45 yard run. Gerard Wade with a 62 yard touchdown moments ago for Bluefield. Despite the play by play announcer botching it. Good job by Gerard. <laughs> and Graham will have to work out of this pickle before halftime without Clements. Pistol look here. Roberts in the gun. Give off to the back. And that is stopped quickly by the interior line of the Bluefield defense. And that was like that was Hughes there on the carry. So Hughes picks up about a yard. It'll be third and five. About 2.20, clock rolling here in the first half. So again, Robertson gun on third and manageable. Hughes the back. He'll lead the way as Roberts will keep it. Off left tackle, gets a block, and then he stopped up there near the eight-yard line. By the outside, and it will be fourth and punting time for Graham and Bluefield will get the football back before halftime, Rusty. Yeah, this is a big opportunity for the Beavers. Uh, wish they had a timeout right here to stop the clock, but they'll still have about a minute left. Maybe they'll have a chance to maybe get some points here at the end. Heading back, the punt from his own end zone will be Nash, Sincere Fields. Back deep, also back deep is Javarius Smith. Clock near 115, play clock at two as they'll bleed all the way down. Flag flies, wobbly kick. We'll take a grand bounce across midfield. Fields handles it there. Back across midfield he goes, gets rid of one tackler, and then he's wrestled down on the Beaver side of the field by Tristan Haas, but a flag lays back near the six-yard line with 103 to go. I think the Beavers only had 10 men on the field right there. And not only will that cost Bluefield here, that'll cost them a little bit of time as well as Graham bled the clock down before kicking it. So we'll, let's see how this shakes out. As, and they're talking with the Bluefield captain, so it may be on Graham. So this may benefit the Beavers here. Let's see what Mr. Official says. They're going to bring him on down. I think they're going to bring it back and re-kick it, it looks like. Well, no signal quite made yet. 103 left here, first half. Mr. Whitehead standing at the 20, has not made a call yet. Now here he goes. So another illegal formation. Second time tonight, Graham has had an illegal formation on the punt. That is something that Coach Palmer and his team will want to clean up before next week, but or maybe even at halftime. If you're Bluefield, you kind of wish you could have declined that penalty, but you may get a break here. Nash will be backed up even further as the ball is spotted at the four, and Nash will kick from his own end zone. Good snap. Another flag flies. Wobbly kick here. It will hit it about the 33 and head out of bounds near the 40, but a flag flies right at the snap, and that may be another situation where Graham was lined up incorrectly. So they are talking with the Bluefield captain. That's Ty Patton there. So they'll make them kick it again. <laughs> I've been watching this game a long time, Rusty, as you. I don't know if I've seen two illegal formations on a punt team back to back and then three in a game. Not that I remember, buddy. So Fields awaits now inside the Graham 35. Nash with his heels on his goal line. Let's see if the Beavers bring some pressure here with under a minute to go in the first half. High snap out of the end zone, Thank and you. the Beavers get a safety. The penalties. 
back up the G-bin and the pressure situation results in the high snap and up over Nash. And the safety gives Bluefield a 9-7 advantage. Yeah, I don't think the Graham G-man worked on uh, snapping from the two-yard line much this week. You know, it's the first game jitters. Uh, the timing was off. The snapper snapped it too uh, high, went over the kicker's head, and resulted in a safety for the Beavers. So with 57 seconds left here in the first half, Bluefield takes their first lead. It's 9-7, to seven and a free kick coming up. So Bluefield will get the ball anyway. And I'm sure Nash will either place kick it or punt it from his own 20. And a good return here could set up the Beavers for an opportunity to add to their lead before halftime. My, how this thing has turned on its head here in the second. A lot of nerves tonight between both squads. A lot of penalties. And that one cost Graham two points as they were backed up after a couple of illegal formations and the snap out of the end zone results in the free kick here. The wobbly kick, Fields takes it at the 40. 45-50, picks up blockers there. A wounds one tackle at the 45, spins across the 40 into Beaver, or Graham territory down near the 37-yard line. And it'll be first and 10 Beavers on the plus side of the field with 50 seconds to go in the second quarter. First and 10 Bluefield from the Graham 37. First time either team has started on the plus side of the field tonight. Let's see if the Beavers can make hay of it. Shotgun formation, pistol look. Fields with a back behind him in to his left. Wade up the gut, dragging tacklers to the 30. Got to hurry up. And they'll have to get to the line on a great first down pickup. It will be second and short. Clock ticking, 38-37. They stop it momentarily for some reason, but I don't think they sh was supposed to. But it's second and short from the 30. And that one spiked as Fields kills the clock. And it'll be third and short with under 30 seconds to go. Penalty on the field. And another flag. We've seen a lot of flags tonight. So we see how this shakes out. 26 seconds on the second quarter clock. Bluefield with a 9-7 advantage. Offsides. Nope, false start. So a false start called on Bluefield. So that will back them up. And it will be second at about seven from the 35. And that kind of takes the wind out of your cells there. Yeah, it looked like uh, Fields had never done that before. It looked like he was trying to spike and take a knee at the same time. Yeah. Something's going to have to work on as the season progressed. So the clock will start here. Second and seven from the 35. Couple of receivers come in motion. Receiver to slot to the near side. Shotgun snap. Fields with time. Rolling. Back will come from the backside. And Edwards will slam Fields to the ground for the sack and then may do it for the first half. Chris Edwards with a big defensive play. Was that Edwards or was that Hughes? Let's check the replay. I thought it was eight. It looked like eight to me. It was eight. So Edwards with a big sack. That's a Dairy Queen tasty play to end the first half. But Bluefield leads at intermission. It's nine to seven. We've got a fun one on our hands, the Battle of the Bluefields here on Video Productions, the Great American Rivalry Series, and of course, WKOI 100.9.
hometown service center has made big improvements to the entire facility, much like the rebuilding a great football coach does each season. You work hard, make improvements, and create a winning team. Stop in before and after the games this season and stock up. At Hometown Service Center, we've revamped our store, renovated our bathrooms, installed new pumps, and now offer a dedicated island for easy access diesel fuel. Come experience the hometown difference at Hometown Shell at the corner of Stadium Drive and College Avenue. Don't wait until it's time to start back at school in the fall. Visit Blueprints Family Health today. We offer a comprehensive range of children's vaccines to ensure their well-being. Experience minimal wait times and swift service at Blue Prince Family Health. Our medical professionals are here to provide efficient care, allowing you to get in and get out quickly. Your health is our priority, and we are committed to serving you. Check off your immunization list at Blue Prince Family Health. season is starting and the all-star lineup of new Kias are here at Friendship Kia of Beckley. We have the playbook to help you score the big win on your new Kia purchase. We make sure you get the best price with almost all of our new cars priced at invoice. We have one of the largest selections of inventory. We have a roster full of non-commissioned sales staff and a any reason seven day exchange program. So get off the bench and get a new Kia from your friends at Friendship Kia of Beckley. Nobody beats Friendship Kia of Beckley. First Sentinel Bank has nine branches throughout the communities of southwestern Virginia and southern West Virginia. And for every locality, First Sentinel is all in with helping our neighbors achieve their financial goals. Endeavoring to be a partner in the growth and success of the people and businesses in our local communities. First Sentinel has built a 45-year reputation of listening to and helping the people in our communities. After all, we are local people serving local people. First Sentinel Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Little General Stores has been serving West Virginia communities for almost five decades. That's nearly 50 years of providing those essential needs for your daily journey. We are so grateful to be a small part of your lives, and we want to recognize the integral part of our operation, the LG family. We know these last couple years haven't been easy, but with every sunrise and sunset, you keep us going. To the LG family, the moms, dads, sisters, brothers, sons, and daughters of West Virginia, thank you. With younger drivers on the road, Bill Cole Auto Mall wants to ensure everyone understands what we offer. Hey, y'all. What's up, fam? Bill Cole Auto Mall is the place to buy your next new or used vehicle. You want to cop the sickest whip, you got to beat Bill Cole. We have the best selection, flexible financing, and top dollar for your trade-in. We got a dope selection, buyer payment options, and we're giving top dollar for your old whip. Before you buy, give us a try. Don't sleep on us. Come vibe with us before you make a move. At Bill Cole, we speak your language. Football season, and Ramey Automotive is here to crush the competition. Our unbeatable lineup of cars, trucks, and SUVs will leave you feeling like a champion every time you hit the road. Whether you're driving through rugged terrain or cruising down the city streets, Ramey Automotive has the perfect ride to tackle any challenge. Ramey Automotive is the game changer you need to take your driving experience to the next level. It's your deal, your way. Visit one of our dealerships or shop online at RameyCars.com. Citizens Building Supply, stop in and you'll see the change is good. Not only are we improving the outside for our community, we're making some changes on the inside. This remodel includes a large showroom with increased product selection, like the Big Green Egg, Traeger Grill, and Benjamin Moore Paint and Stain with over 3,500 colors. Changes are happening to improve your home improvement experience. Citizens Building Supply, Bluefield Avenue, Bluefield. You may take the field in performance.
Younger drivers on the road, Bill Cole Auto Mall wants to ensure everyone understands what we offer. Hey, y'all. What's up, fam? Bill Cole Auto Mall is the place to buy your next new or used vehicle. If you want to cop the sickest whip, you got to beat Bill Cole. We have the best selection, flexible finance, and a top dollar for your trade in. We've got a dope selection, buyer payment options, and we're giving top dollar for your old whip. Before you buy, give us a try. Don't sleep on us. Come vibe with us before you make a move. At Bill Cole, we speak your language. Hometown Service Center has made big improvements to the entire facility, much like the rebuilding a great football coach does each season. You work hard, make improvements, and create a winning team. Stop in before and after the games this season and stock up. At Hometown Service Center, we've revamped our store, renovated our bathrooms, installed new pumps, and now offer a dedicated island for easy access diesel fuel. Come experience the hometown difference at Hometown Shell at the corner of Stadium Drive and College Avenue. Let's hear it for the Beatle Marching Band.
Ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause for that Northern High School Bravo Marching Band. Bond, James Bond. Welcome back to Mitchell Stadium. Juno shot field down below. Both high school marching bands performing tremendously as we are at halftime. We're almost through halftime at this point. The Ramey Auto Group Halftime Show brought to you by all the Ramey Auto Group locations and the two Virginias, eight of them to be exact. If you're looking for a car, you can find it somewhere right around the corner. RameyAutoGroup.com. Graham struck first, late in the first, 315 left in the quarter, exactly a 45-yard run by Tydres Clements. PAT made it 7 other Graham, that was the score until 326 left in the second quarter when Gerard Way busted up the middle for a 62-yard scamper of his own. PAT tied it up at 7. After back-to-back -back illegal formations on a Pun attempt by the G men. The Graham kicker, Mr. Dylan Nash, had his heels on the end line and a snap went over his head. There's Ty Dres's touchdown. If you're watching on the Great American Rivalry series, that was a great run by him, which we'll talk about him in a second. But the bat snap went over the head of Nash, and the safety gave Bluefield a 9 7 lead here at halftime on that drive before that safety. Ty Dres Clements had to be helped off the field by a couple of coaches and trainers. It did not look good. And it's unlikely that we'll see Ty Dres in the remainder of this one. We hope that he is okay, but it looks like Clements is, Clements is done for the night. So I would suspect if you're the Bluefield Beaver defense, you're going to see a hefty, hefty load of Sean Hughes. Yeah, absolutely. I think that uh, Hughes is going to have to be more of a power back for them. Uh, it wouldn't shock me to see the Graham office coordinator decide to throw the ball a little bit because they have some athletes at the wide receiver position. Yep. Uh, you know, get the ball in the space, maybe get their short game going. You know, get the secondary to start lighting up and maybe start hitting a vertical over the top. We've got a great crew tonight. We've overcame a few things. One thing, uh, a piece of equipment just died on us. <laughs> I was talking to Rusty and it just quit on us. So those listening on WKOI, we appreciate you tuned in. You're listening to the audio from Video Productions. Video Productions, our video stream partner throughout the year. Great American Rivalry Series, of course, is here tonight. SUV TV and HBU TV Plus. They're also going to be here tomorrow for the Bluefield University Florida Memorial Game. So it's football season, folks. We are excited about it. And here, right before halftime is over, Bluefield with a 9 7 advantage. Graham won the toss and deferred, so Bluefield had the ball first. So Graham will get the football first out of the locker room here. And if you're Bluefield's D, I, I really. I think if you're both teams right now, you've got to just find yourself a way to cut down on the mistakes. Both This ball game could be different for both teams had it not been for penalties right now. But we, we've got an entertaining one, and that's all really asked for in the first game of the year. Yeah, penalties hurt both teams right there in the first half. You know, right there with the Beavers, you know, before the drive starts, you got, you know, a five-yard penalty that sets them back, and then – almost getting a third and short and end up having another five-yard penalty. And then, you know, they don't convert the third down to make it another first down because they have to force themselves to punt. And then right there before the end of the half, Graham with the same thing on special teams with the two penalties that backed them up. And then, you know, missed time in, on the snap to the punter, which resulted in two points and the Beaver to lead. Shout out to all our sponsors for Bluefield Beavers football this season. First Community Bank, Citizens Building Supply, Friendship Kia, Cole Chevy, Blue Prince Family Health, Palmtown Shell, First Sentinel Bank, Bilco Automall, Stevens Mitsubishi, Dairy Queen, Pepsi, MCMB Banks, Shell Advisory, Ramey Auto Group, The Vault, Cole Heritage Customs, The Rail Yard, and Bluefield State University. 
We're moments away from the start of the third quarter. It will be Graham football. And the captains will meet at midfield here in a few moments to determine which side of the field the Beavers will defend. Third quarter brought to you by The Vault. Downtown, the best selection of bourbon fine wines. And the two Virginias, they've also got some great steaks as well. I could use one of those right now. <laughs> Open for dinner Wednesday through Saturday. Make a reservation online, thevaultdowntown.com. So Bluefield on the near sideline, ready to go as it's Fields. And the other captain, that is number six, R.J. Harrison. Bluefield fans, you can laugh at me. I've got six and eight mixed up a few times tonight. But Gerard Wade, number eight with the touchdown earlier. Graham back to their sidelines, and here comes Hughes. He'll come out to meet the captains, and they'll decide which side of the field it is any what, what do you think, you know, you've played in this game, you've coached this game, Rusty. What do you think was talked about in that locker room at halftime? I think for the Bluefield Beavers it's just to uh, settle down and, you know, get some of these uh, substitutions lined out. There was many times where there was only ten men on the field or too many men on the field. You know, it's, it happens in the first game, but this stuff that needs to be taken care of during scrimmages and in practice, you know, if we can eliminate those stupid penalties, it gives the better, Beavers a better chance, give them better field position. Uh, for the Graham, I think if they're going to come out, I think they're just going to have to, if, you know, if Ty Dres can't play, they're going to have to figure a way to overcome that and, you know, get the guy settled and say, you know, we just got to find a way to win. But hopefully for the Beavers, you know, they come out and play hard this second half. Both these programs pride themselves on playing tough schedules. It doesn't get any easier for either team next week. Graham will take on Galax. They'll head to Galax. Galax has been a power in Class 1 football in Virginia for the past few years. That'll be a tough matchup next Friday. Bluefield, one rivalry game to another. They'll head to Princeton next Friday, a 7 p.m. kickoff up at Honeycutt Field. We'll be there with the pregame show at 6.30. But at least 24 minutes, maybe even more, left to go here tonight at Mitchell in front of a packed house. It's 9-7 Beavers, and they'll kick this one away to Graham to open up the third quarter. Graham will defend the scoreboard end of the stadium. It's hot, it's humid, and there's not much of a breeze. Really, no factors tonight to hamper anything football-related. A win, we had a few sprinkles fall about 15 minutes ago, but nothing of the sort. So, almost a picturesque night for football, if you could plan it that way. Francisco has it teed up at the 40, ball in the air, end over end kick. Edwards takes it on a hop at the 15. Bounces outside to the 25, near the 30. He's gobbled up there. Looks like JoJo Campbell on the tackle. And it will be first and 10 G-men from their own 29. Really, neither team has taken advantage of field position. The lone time Graham was put behind the eight ball on the fumble and kickoff and then the penalties, they gave up the safety on the bad snap on the punt, but they set up shop here at their own 29, first and 10, and it'll be the second half without Clements in the backfield and a false start for Graham will be the first penalty of the night, or the first third quarter, excuse me, definitely not the first penalty of the night. So false start of the line for Graham backs them up a few. I've been very impressed by Bluefield's defense today. They've been around the football a lot. You don't really see one-on-one -on -one tackling. You've seen a lot of gang tackling tonight. That's a good in a group. First down handoff. The new back is bottled up quickly, and that is number 23. Daniel Jennings, 6'2", 215-pound sophomore. You know, you know how great Tydres Clements is, but it's not bad when you can plug a kid in at 6'2", 215 in the backfield. And Jennings does have some speed as well. Bottled up there. It'll be second and long. Ball back on the Graham 25. 11-25. Clock rolling here in the third. It's a Beaver 9-7 advantage. Roberts, the sophomore quarterback, breaks the huddle. 
Jennings to his left. Snap is good. Spot pass out in the flats. Complete to Edwards. Gets rid of one tackler. Falls forward up near the 29, the initial line of scrimmage. As they flare it out to Edwards in the flats. And Bluefield does a good job to get over to make an open field play. RJ Harrison read that very well. Almost was able to get a hand on it, but pursued it to get the first uh, hit on the man. And it looked like Fields and another Beaver defender come up to finish the tackle. Yeah, he will not get credited for a tackle, but still a star play there to hold him up long enough to let his teammates kind of come in and converge. Third and 10 here, back at the 29, 10 and a half minutes, third quarter. Receiver slot each side, left side, the wide side of the field for the G-man. Roberts back to pass, plenty of time. Across the middle, flares it, and it's incomplete. And Jeffrey King shaking his head. He is wondering why he didn't take that one in the house on an interception as that falls just away from him. Also, there was JoJo Campbell. Both those guys had an opportunity to football, but nevertheless, a punting situation for the G-Men. Great job defensively here for Bluefield. And Nash will kick this away from about his own 19. Fields back, also King back near their own 40. Play clock under 10, snap is good. Not much pressure, wobbly kick. It takes a bounce as the two returners get confused there, and Fields just has to get away from it. And then they say a Bluefield Beaver touched it. Bodies pile on to the football. No motion quite yet who has the football. And it looks like the Beavers may have came up with it. It'll be first and 10 Bluefield from their own 20, but they gave up a lot of field position there on the miscommunication between the two guys. Yeah, it all started with the return man. It was bad communication, and then Fields got away from it, and I can't tell who that was that went to touch the ball. As a defender, if, if we haven't touched, or as a return man, if you ain't touched the ball, get away from it. Yeah, and they, a couple of Graham guys came in to kind of force him towards the football as well, which is very smart on their end. Smart. So about 15, 20 yards given up there for Bluefield on the roll. That'll help Dylan Nash's numbers in his punts. It's first and 10 regardless for the Beavers at their own 20. 10, 12, third quarter. Beavers with a two-point advantage. First possession after halftime. Fields in the pistol. High snap, gets over his head. He's chasing it down, ball on the deck. Bodies on it, and Graham says they have it, and they do. A bad snap gives the football back to Graham inside the 10. Tough break there for Fields. And we'll take a replay on the video end of things. And it was just over his head. Tough break there, a big turnover. And Graham right on the doorstep, first and goal from the four. Looked like the Beavers' offense was trying to go back to the same formation that they scored with Wade. And big break bad here. Snap. Yeah, yeah. Big break here for Graham. Hughes the power back to the left of Roberts in the gun. Low snap. They kick it. It's on the deck again. Bodies in a carnage of a heap. Back down at the three. Who will come out of there with that one? Bluefield will. Number four on the come up with the ball right there. You Time could not foul. script the crazier game that we've seen tonight. Back to back fumbles, and Bluefield gets it back, and they'll have to dig themselves out of the hole. It'll be first and ten from the four, but that's a lot better than playing defense down there. And it'll be back in the hands of Sincere Fields and the Bluefield offense. Yeah, Zach, we go back to the keys of the game. That was one of the things I talked about with the Beavers' offense was, you know, the turnovers. It uh, looks like now it's uh, a key for the Graham offense as well. I'm telling you, someone has greased up these footballs <laughs> tonight. First and ten from inside the five. Fields wisely goes under center. Two backs behind it. Tailback gets the handoff. Falls forward off left tackle. And that will be R.J. Harrison. 
It's way down the carry. It'll be second and seven for the Beavers. 940 clock rolling here in the third. Bluefield with a two-point advantage. And a wild start to the third. It will be second and seven from the seven. After the three-yard pickup. Break of the huddle with 10 on the play clock. Fields under center. I formation behind him. Wait. This time, Med in the backfield violently by Jennings for a one-yard loss, third and long. Looks like R.J. missed his man on that, and it got one beat inside. In whoever that was for the Graham defense Jennings come up with a big pop on the eye back. Daniel Jennings. Jennings. Daniel Jennings came in with authority there and lay the wood, third and long. 8.50 clock rolling here in the third. Bluefield trying to dig themselves out of this hole from inside their own five. They're now at the six after the one-yard loss. Play clock at 10 as Fields brings them to the line. A receiver in a slot to the near side. That is the short side of the field. Misplay. Kept by Fields. He'll bounce off a couple of would-be tackles. Spins off another one up near the 15. And he'll pick up the first down. Tough run. Sincere Fields picking up and putting them down. What a run by Sincere Fields. Got a late flag, Zach. I think there was some talking on the near sideline after the play. We'll see how that plays out. But Sincere Fields, man, he is fun to watch. That is a young man that wants to carry the football. Looks like number six, Jamel Floyd, was a little bit animated after that play. A lot of these guys know each other really well. Yes, Floyd was a Beaver his freshman year, so he's played on both sides of the uh, sideline for both teams. We'll see how this shakes out. 8 20, third quarter, 9 7, Bluefield with the advantage. At the moment, they've dug themselves out of the shadow of their own goalpost. Now the officials talking it out. I think they've got everyone huddled up here and said, hey, guys, we know this is a robbery, but let's try to play a little nice here. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm sure someone said something about someone's grandmother's chili and how their, their dad didn't mow the yard quite well. I, you know, all the, all the usual Jocelyn's down there. Mr. Whitehead about to tell us the play. After the first down was obtained, we have a dead ball personal foul against the offense, number 67. That's half the distance to the goal, but his kick results in the first down. So they get the first down after the play. It was on Francisco. Jaden Francisco told someone that their cookout wasn't good enough, and I think someone took offense. So that'll back things up back inside the 10. It'll be first and 10 Bluefield from there at the 8. Pistol look here. Fields checks the situation. Snap good this time. Fakes the handoff. Take, keeps it himself across the 10. Gets a nice little block there, and he'll fall forward near the 13 on a nice first down pickup. And it'll be second and manageable. Sincere Fields had a great game last year, a couple of touchdowns in the loss, and I think he took a little offense to that. He wants to put this on his back this year, and he has here early in the third. Yeah, Fields is trying to make himself a household name amongst the two states. And he's doing a pretty good job tonight. 12 of the play clock as the Beavers settle on the line, second and manageable. Fields in the pistol. He'll pitch it out. Powell try to catch the edge, and he will not. He's popped. Ball loose. Late flag. He falls back on it, and a flag flies late as well. I'm not sure if there was a face mask on or that. That is Keyshawn or Smith. Excuse me. Smith was popped, and he's hobbled. And he's coming to the near sidelines. So Smith. A little hobble there, and we'll see how the flag plays out. That was in the backfield. That's usually in the spot of a hold, and that's not going to help Bluefield out at all. Clock stop, 7-24 left here in the third. It's been an interesting third quarter. Graham defense. Finish 
So they get a face mask on Hughes, who came up to make the play. And the penalty will give Bluefield a first down. So neither team really happy without giving each other a little bit of a, a break both ways. And another penalty will push Bluefield back to the 19. Blitz coming. Fields hands off to the back off Ray Gard, and he falls forward up near the 21. Nice run there. It looked like it was Wade, and it was. Gerard Wade already a touchdown at his belt tonight. Has had a couple of great carries. Seven minutes to go here in the third. Bluefield with a two-point advantage. It's third or second and seven. Yeah, Bluefield's O-line did a pretty good job right there picking up the blitz to keep him from getting to the backfield. I'll be honest. We knew Bluefield's offensive line was going to be young coming into this one. They've played really well tonight. Not bad for an inexperienced line. I think as the season progresses, they're going to get better and better. Fields breaks the huddle. 6.35, clock rolling here in the third. Pistol look. Wade and Harrison back there. Harrison, the tailback, drops the handoff, falls on it. Bodies pile up near the 22. And luckily for Bluefield, Harrison will fall back on it. And it will be third and six. I'm telling you, someone has greased these footballs up. Third and six, though. The clock nearing six minutes. And Fields back to the huddle to give his teammates the play. Looked like the running back was reaching for the ball before the QB could place it in his belly, which caused the missed, uh, mishandle and the fumble. And here's one of the things back. you got to keep in mind. Almost everyone in that backfield except Wade was wide receiver, so taking a handoff a is sometimes new to them. Low snap. Field scoops it and makes hay of it. He hit the dirt. The ball pops out late, but he was already down. And it will be fourth and punting time for Bluefield. So that play had no chance of developing on this low snap. Fields made as much hay of it as he could as he got back to the line of scrimmage. Actually picked up about a yard and a half. And it will be fourth and five from the Beaver 23. And punting time for Fields as Edwards and Gage Palmer will head back deep. Looks like Palmer will be kind of the protect man near the 40. And Edwards will play center field back near the 45. Good snap this time. Nice spiraling kick. It will take a hop at the 50, and Edwards fields it there. He has a block. Bounces outside the 40. 35 has the edge, and he's wrestled out there. Inside the 30, Graham sideline wants a horse collar tackle as both teams converge to again exchange pleasantries. And Graham will be on the plus side of the field with under five to go here in the third. Yeah, the Graham coaching staff has to be careful right there not to get too animated because they could get a sideline warning from the officials. It was very close to a horse collar tackle, but not quite there, I don't think. But Graham. Back on the plus side of the field, first and 10. Now, there was a flag thrown on the far side, I guess, because there's the sticks haven't moved. It's like there's a player down. They on the may far be a player line. down, yes. So let's, let's see if we can get a. Looks like a Beaver player. A ble Coach Beaver is player over. is down. So a timeout the for the injury, 447. Third quarter, do not go anywhere. It's 9-7 Bluefield. We've got a fun one here tonight at Mitchell. You're listening to Beaver, Bluefield Beaver Football on WKOY 100.9 FM. And we're live on the Great American Rivalry Series and, of course, video productions.
you're in the market for a new ride and looking for the best value, come see us at Stevens Mitsubishi in Princeton. Mitsubishi Motors has the most exciting and affordable lineup of vehicles in America, and they're all backed by the best warranty in the business, a 10-year, 100,000-mile powertrain warranty. And come by and check out the hottest crossover in America, the all-new 2022 Mitsubishi Outlander. They are awesome. So come see us at Stevens Mitsubishi in Princeton. Mitsubishi Motors, drive your ambition. Player on the far sideline is being helped across. That is number seven, Jeffrey King. So both teams have had some big injuries tonight. Jeffrey is not in a good state of mind right now as they're helping him back to the sideline. So hopefully he can get back in the game soon. Hopefully that's nothing serious. But it is sticky out there. A lot of cramps going on at the moment. And we've got a battle on our hands. 9-7 our score. We knew this was going to be a good one. We didn't quite anticipate this one. Tydress Clements is out for Graham. That is a big, big key to their offense. And you, you hope he's not seriously hurt. But right now, Bluefield, they kind of smell it in the water. Yeah, uh, I think losing Clements changes the whole dynamic of the whole game. Uh, it's interesting to see what the Beavers can do right here with a different style of offense, more of a power running offense from the Graham g -Man. First and 10, Graham from the Beaver 28. Hand off to Hughes, the power back. He'll bounce off a left tackle, and he fights forward up across the 25 for positive gains. A couple more guys pushing and shoving there as Landon Crane in on the tackle. And it will be second at about six. Ball spotted at the 24. 420 clock rolling here in the third. Both teams have huddled up tonight. Something is kind of rare these days in modern day football, but Graham breaks the huddle here. A late player goes off the sidelines. Wing off the side to the left, also receiver there. This time Jennings bounces off left tackle inside the 20, forced out of bounds inside the 15. And Jennings, the youngster, if he can start getting his footing, that's not going to help Bluefield at all. You know, the 6'2", 215 back has some wheels on him. He had a pulling guard that gave him a nice lead block on that. He got the edge, got some positive yards, and they're deep into the beaver side of the field. Well, developed play. You don't see the you don't see the pull much to the weak side of the field, but right there, Graham used it. Bluefield will take a timeout with 3.55 remaining in third. A first down and 10 play coming up from the 15 after this as Bluefield leads 9-7 here on Great American Rivalry. Video Productions and, of course, WKLY 109.0 FM. Mitchell Stadium, first and 10 after the Beaver timeout. Pistol look for the G-Men. Jennings, bad snap, goes through Roberts's hand. Roberts is in trouble, and he's going to get dropped for a big loss. R.J. Harrison back there to lay Roberts down for the big loss, and a big play for the Bluefield defense taking advantage of the bad snap, and it will be second and long for Graham. Ball spotted back at the Beaver 24. 30 clock rolling here in the third. Bluefield clinging to a 9-7 advantage. And neither team really tonight has seemed to be able to get out of each other's way. Fumbles, penalties, all sorts of craziness here tonight. But it's been entertaining. Out of the huddle, here comes Roberts and Jennings. Jennings to the left of Roberts, a receiver slot near and left one Graham. receiver. And now Graham we use a late third quarter timeout. So both teams 
using a timeout here on this drive. I think both teams realize how important this drive is heading towards the fourth quarter with a two-point advantage for Bluefield. We've got a great crew tonight, and I, and I know we've dealt with uh, some equipment issues, but, man, everyone is working hard tonight. Let's shout out everybody. Levi Bardhart, the video productions producer, Marcus Barnett, Lisa Barnett, Great American Rivalry producers, our off-site producers, Butch Mounts, Matt Deal, Ethan Stinson, our camera people, Marianne Booth, Josh Watkins, Derek Wright, and Ahmad Taylor. Thank, thanks to each and every one of these folks for working hard tonight. Rusty Cobra, my analyst to my left. I'm Zach Helton. Thank you for tuning in wherever you are. If you've been with us all night, thank you for sticking through some of the technical issues we've dealt with. But, man, we have saw a good one. Bluefield taking advantage of a bad snap on a punt before the second quarter ended. Take a 9-7 lead in the locker room, and that's been the score since as we're down to the final three minutes plus here in the third. Out of the timeout, trips to the wide side. That's the right side. One receiver to the left. Roberts to the backfield with Jennings. No tight end. Shotgun snap coming. Good one. Give off to Jennings. No, kept by Roberts, and he lost in the backfield. And he has to fall on it at the 30. And a big loss there. The option not only had Bluefield's defense dialed in, they had me dialed in, and Roberts kept it, and then he lost it for a loss. Back near the 30, he tracks it down and wisely just falls on it. He had some green in front of him right there. He really did. He, he had options, edge, too. He got some positive yards. Now decision time for the G-men as the clock rolling near two and a half minutes here in the third. It's third and really long. If you're going four down territory here, you try to cut this in half. Yeah, I think the goal for them is to get inside the 20 right here so they can go for it on fourth down. Play clock at four, three. Roberts checks the situation. Gets the snap at one. No, it's late, and the flag will delay the game and another penalty for the G-men. Things were kind of heading in the right direction for the G-men on this drive. They got down inside the 20 into the red zone, and they've taken a few steps back ever since, and it will be third and really long. Ball spotted back at the 36. They have to get to the sixth for a first down. Third and 30. Snap. Receivers everywhere. Roberts heaves to the end zone. He's got a man down there. Throw it up. Caught. It was he in. Touchdown, g -Man. What a tremendous catch at the goal line. 16. And that's Blake Graham with the haul. And the G-Men are back on top. 13-9, PAT coming up. What a throw by Roberts and an athletic play by Blake Graham at the goal line. And Graham is back on top. Plenty of time, a late blitz picked up. And then at the goal line, Graham had the size advantage, reached up, hauled it in, and somehow stayed in bounds. What a play. And let's just look at that in a minute. That's a junior from a sophomore. Those guys are going to be around again next year. Nash's kick in route and good. 207, third quarter. Graham G Men back on top. It's 14 9 here on WKOY FM. Great American Robbery Series and Video Productions.
official thinks on his point of view. This could be a big one. Officials will converge the yellow flag. The yellow flag has been the star of this one tonight. He's made more appearances in this game than Tom Hanks in any movie, really. Any Saturday Night Live any Saturday, There you go. <laughs> Official. So pass interference called on Blake Graham. And that is a big penalty. Huge penalty right there. I think it was, it should have went against the Beavers, but I think the Beavers will take it here. Hopefully this will continue momentum for this drive, hopefully result in points for the, for the Beavers. First and 10, Bluefield from their own 43. Clock under two minutes here in the third. Fields of the pistol with the back to his left. Clap, handoff. Bouncing outside, that is Keyshawn Smith. Was forced out of bounds violently, but helped up by Gage Palmer. A little sportsmanship there. About a three yard pickup. It'll be second and seven from the 46. Tydrez Clemens went out with an injury in the first half, but Graham's offense has sputtered, but they have the lead by five. Closing in on the fourth. Bluefield trying to change that here. Second and six, right on the cusp of midfield. Fields breaks the huddle, alerts his backs of the play. A clap, another handoff, Hairston up the middle. Right off right guard, fights forward. And picks up positive yards. Got a two yard pickup, and it'll be third and five. 90 seconds remaining here in the third. A lot of talking down on that field between both teams and both teams and the officials. And this one's been a fun one tonight. Graham scored on the last drive. Bluefield trying to answer here. Third and five, 110 to go in the third. Fields checks his situation, sets his line, takes the snap, handoff, up the gut. Nice drive forward, and that's going to be enough for a first down as that was Wade, number eight, Gerard Wade, up to the Graham, 46, first down Beavers. Yeah, I think the Graham linebacker tried to time a blitz to meet uh, Wade in the backfield, but he overran, got too deep. Wade got by him, got to the next level, got positive yards for a first down. Wade, the bell cow rusher for this team, leading rusher last year, and he's comfortable back there again. First and 10 on the plus side of the field. Fake on the pitch. Fields keeps it, and he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage by a wall of white. Led there by the big defensive line. As Germonte Hendricks in on the stop. You Brino Isabel from the linebacker position gets his nose in the mix as well. And it will be second and long, and Bluefield will take this opportunity into the fourth as the final 10 seconds of the quarter. Tick off the clock. Three in the books. It's been fun. Ram leads 14 to nine as we head to the fourth, but the Beavers are driving. We'll see what happens after this. As you're enjoying Bluefield Beavers football on WKOY 100.9 FM, and of course on video productions and the Great American Rivalry Series. Wait until it's time to start back at school in the fall. Visit Blueprints Family Health today. We offer a comprehensive range of children's vaccines to ensure their well-being. Experience minimal wait times and swift service at Blueprints Family Health. Our medical professionals are here to provide efficient care, allowing you to get in and get out quickly. Your health is our priority, and we are committed to serving you. Check off your immunization list at Blueprints Family Health.
Welcome back to Mitchell Stadium as we head to the fourth quarter. Graham G. Med 14, the Bluefield Beavers 9. But the Beavers are on the march. Second and 10 from the Graham 46. Fields back in the pistol. Wade behind it. Harrison to his right. He'll keep it following Wade. Off right tackle fights forward up near the 40. Nice pick up there. It'll be third and manageable. Yeah, Fields did a better job there selling the play and letting it develop. I think previously on the fake tosses, I think he's rushing, not allowing his offensive line to get out and get lead blocks for us. He did a good job there, positive yards. Let's see what they can do right here on this third down. The 30 seconds into the fourth. Third and five from the 41, the official spot. Pistol look, heavy to the right side. That's the short side of the field. Snap, Fields, he's going to follow the blocker again. Fights forward up to the 39, but he's bottled up there as the Graham D converges. Hughes and gang in on the stop. And it will be fourth and interesting here, <laughs> to say the least. A punt could pin Graham back deep, but a little over four yards, and you can keep this drive moving. Looks Decision like bringing, time for the Beavers. Looks like they're bringing the punt team out. Maybe a fake. Maybe they'll just try and pin it deep, let their defense do what they've been doing. Hopefully don't give up a big play. Edwards, the junior, heading back. He's settled inside his own 15. Flag flies, snap, good, end over end kick, could be good for the Beavers. And Edwards, he threw a, he threw a fair catch and then he took off. But that's kind of a mental mistake on his end. He probably should have let that one go. But let's see how this flag shakes out. I don't think Edwards quite knew where he was. No, I think if he realized where he was and how much space he had to run, So Fields is either pin Graham back again or the penalty. So another illegal formation on a punt. This time Bluefield hit with the hammer. I don't know the record on illegal formations on punt attempts, but we may be nearing it. I think we're pretty close. <laughs> So this time the ball backed up to the Graham 44. Fields will kick this one from a near midfield. Edwards back deep. High stab this time. This one spiraled down near the 15. Edwards backs away from it. It takes a Graham bounce and it will skip out of bounds at the 20. Exactly. So 24 yard punt no return. Something to keep eye on that uh, punt formation. The the up back in front of the punter seems to sometimes be almost shifting in front of him. May cause an issue later in the game if it's a punt, if he punts it right into the rear end of his teammates. Yeah, there's there's a few things once you go back and look at the film on this one tonight that need to be cleaned up, but man, you can't take anything off of the effort both these squads have put in tonight. 10-21 here in the fourth. Graham with the football first and 10 from their own 20 with a five-point advantage and a late sub here, and Bluefield's going to have to waste the timeout here. Almost another penalty. Just, just some, I guess, miscommunication here. I'm not, I'm not 100% sure where the fault lies, but, man, it's just kind of tough to see couple guys not knowing what's going on at this point in this game. You would think first quarter, yeah, you get those out of your way, but at this point in this game, you got a five-point ball game. One play could change this game, and you got to be sure you got to be top of mind going in here. Yeah, as a former player and a coach in this game, you know, communication is key. You know, you, this is the most frustrating part is you have too many people out there, you don't have enough people out there people don't know what you're doing. You know, it's expected early in the season, but here it is, you know, fourth quarter, you know, that type of mistake is going to cost you a ball game. So out of the Bluefield timeout now, here's the big thing about it. Bluefield only has one timeout remaining for the rest of this fourth quarter. First and 10 grand from their own 20. 
with a five point lead, 10 20 to remaining in regulation. Roberts to the gun, pistol look, hand off Jenny. Top the gun, he goes. Dragging would be tackles across the 25, and he's finally wrestled down up near the 28 yard line by the linebackers of Bluefield. Jennings, I think he got a little nervous when he came in early, but now he's starting to get his footing. Yeah, he's starting to look a little bit more and more comfortable each touch that he gets. Second and short for Graham, ball at the 28. Again, Jennings gets the handoff across the 31st down and dragging Beavers up near the 40. What a tough back Jennings is. There's a Beaver down in the backfield on the big first down carry. A 12-yard run by Jennings. He has a full head of steam, and he is just leaving people in the dust. And we went on and on, rightfully so, for Tydres Clemens, All-State Player of the Year last year in Virginia. And when he went down with an injury, we were kind of looking at each other and said, well, no, we know Hughes is going to get some carries, but who else can run the ball? Well, I think we've got an answer. Daniel Jennings is picking up the slack here in the fourth, and he's made a couple of nice carries in a row, and he has Graham first and 10 at their own 41 with under 10 to go in this one. Got a great uh, Bluefield player down at the 30. Hopefully that's just some cramps as everyone on both sidelines trying to force feed as much liquid into their body as possible on this humid evening in the two Virginias. We've been blessed tonight. You know, we had an equipment issue that kind of kicked us off the radio for a little bit, but, man, we've got a great, great crew tonight, and we're thankful that everyone working hard here tonight, and we'll uh, – We'll have uh, Matt Deal back at the station, get the screwdriver out and take that thing apart and hopefully fix it before Prince next week. But we'll be on there at 6.30 next Friday night at Honeycutt in Princeton. Seven o'clock kick next week at the Tigers. The Tigers off tonight as their game with Lincoln County postponed until tomorrow. There was some flooding in Lincoln County, so we wish all the luck to the folks in Lincoln County, great people up there. And Princeton will make that drive tomorrow and we'll learn a little bit about the Beavers, or learn more about the Tigers, I should say, after tomorrow night. First and 10, Graham from the 41. He was in motion. Snap, Jennings again, carrying the load this time. Bluefield not fooled, and the ball loose on the deck, and it looks like loose Jeffrey King has it. No signal yet. No one signals. Let's take a look at the replay here. Bluefield football. Yeah, the ball was definitely out before he touched the ground. No one was really assertive down there to make a decision. But like we saw in the replay, as you said, Rusty, it was out. And right there to scoop it off the deck, well, Jeffrey King says, I thank you very much. And a big fumble there has Bluefield in plus territory with nine and a half to go. Trailing 14 and nine, first and 10 from the Grand 42. Swinging momentum once more. What a pendulum this one has been tonight. Fields in the gun. Way to his right. Tied into the right, blitz coming. Here goes Fields to the off right tackle. Gets outside of the 40. And Hughes is there to meet him and sling him down. After about a four yard pickup, it will be second and six. Sean Hughes is fun to watch defensively. That kid gets after it. Yeah, good looking kid, great body, likes to play the game of football, he's physical. It was impressive to see Fields at 150 pounds try to take him on <laughs> at 235 pounds. Yeah, pound. sincere, I'm not scared of anyone, he says. Nine minute mark, fourth quarter, five point Graham Lee. Bluefield driving here, second and five. Ball in Graham territory. Shotgun formation of back to the near side. Fields is going to keep it. A lose one would be tackled in the backfield. Gets the edge. Down near the 34. Forced out. They'll spot him at the 33. So a four-yard pickup, and it will be third and short for Bluefield. Yeah, look feel like Fields misread his block. Look, they were trying to kick out, and he tried to bounce outside of it. Still made a play, got positive yards. Now it's third and about one. Let's see if they can get the first down right here. 
And I think this is a solid game plan for Bluefield. We've seen a lot of turnovers both sides. And I think Coach Simon, the game, saying, if you can get the snap back to Sincere, just let him go. Yeah, it, it allows you to have another blocker in front of him because you don't have to worry about the handoff. Clock frozen, 8.46 here in the fourth. It's third and one. Here's the ball. Is that the Graham 32? And now a whistle before the play. Timeout Bluefield as they had to use their final timeout to avoid a delay a game. I think it's a smart timeout. It is a smart timeout, but it, that's a smart timeout, but you hate to use it after using having to use bad timeouts earlier. And it's not coaching bad timeouts, it's just the team put the coaches in a bad situation to use those timeouts. Exactly. You hate to use, to use your last timeout on a third and one in Graham territory. But this late in the game, it was smart a little Freddie to run the sideline to get the official's attention to call the timeout because you don't want to go from a third and one to a third and six. But this is a big third and one coming up with Bluefield trailing 14 to nine, 846 remaining here in the fourth. It's been back and forth all night. Graham had an early lead. Ty Drez Clement with the first touchdown of the night. The first, Gerard Wade answered with a 62-yard run of his own in the second, and then a bad snap on a punt by Graham with their punt team right on the goal line. Gived up the safety, and Bluefield had a 9-7 advantage at halftime, and then Graham with a big pass play late in the third. Roberts to Graham has them now ahead 14-9. Wherever you are, however you are, we're glad you've been with us tonight. You've seen a good one. It's not been the prettiest of football games, but man, has it been fun to watch. Third and one, big play here. Fields keeps it. First down, yes, he falls forward up to the 30 as he runs into a wall of white and will pick up about three when he only needed one. First and 10, Bluefield at the grand third. Looked like the Beavers took an extra offensive lineman and brought him over to the right side to make a three-man surface. It did a good job there to get the edge for him to gain that first down. So the timeout was wise. Very wise. That was crucial right there. Eight and a half minutes, clock rolling after the first down. Fields brings his crew to the line. He has Wade behind him. As a receiver to the far side, that's the left side. Checks the sideline. Play clock at six. Snap good. Bobble the snap, but a handoff to Wade. He goes straight at the backer. Falls Wade forward for a nice a positive game pickup. Game I think the bobble of the snap may have got the timing of the playoff just a touch. But a smart play by Wade. He held up long enough, got the handoff, falls forward for a positive pickup. It'll be second and a long seven. Clock under eight now as it's ticking away. And you got to think as soon as Bluefield can punch one in here, you know, bar anything, the clock, they've got to get rid of that as soon as possible. A long way to go before that. 7.40, clock rolling, play clock at 10. Fields lining everyone up in the pistol look. Blitz coming from the left side. Snap low, give off on the counter play. Man, what a nice play. That was designed just perfectly. It avoids the blitz. And the running back, that was Harrison that time, falls forward for a nice gain. It's third and three after the four-yard pickup. Very tough run by Harrison, you know, a converted receiver to a running back this year. You know, he runs the ball very, very well for somebody that's really never done it. Chess game afoot here as the blitz was coming from the left side. Counter play brought RJ to the right side. Third and three, under seven we go here in the fourth. Fields in the pistol, snap good. Again, Wade gets rid of one tackler, falling forward to the 20, and he'll be very close to a first down. And kind of like we were talking, Floyd, or uh, excuse me, Hughes and Jennings carrying the load. It is right now Gerard Wade time for Bluefield. Absolutely, I think you got to stick with Wade and Harrison, the two physical runners. Wade runs very, very hard. Harrison runs very physical. And you still got fields back there that you can go to with some type of QB counter. Clock evaporating here in the fourth. We're at six and a half minutes. Bluefield trails by five, but on the hunt. First and 10 from the 20. Sincere fields in the pistol. This time back to Wade. Wade 
Bounces off a would-be tackler off the right guard, falls forward near the 16, four-yard pickup. It'll be second and six. Yeah, the Beavers' offense is doing a good job of getting to the second level. Unfortunately, they can't get past that second level to hopefully get a long touchdown run. But we'll take the positive yards and keep moving. Hopefully, we'll get an end zone right here. Been probably the best drive of the night so far for Bluefield. It has been. They've avoided penalties. They've taken care of the football. And they're eating up a lot of clock. Second and five, they say at the 15. Same look. Tight end right, pistol look. Fake to Wade. Fields keeps it, and he will not get back the line of scrimmage. Actually, he'll be wrestled down to the backfield for a loss as none other than Sean Hughes and gang in on the stop. I think Blake Graham was in there as well. Graham's defense read that one nicely. A loss of about a yard and a half. It will be third and a short seven with 5.20. Clock ticking here in the fourth as the Beavers are in the red zone. The Shell Advisory Red Zone. Shelladvisorygroup.com. Check out all things Randy Albert are doing there. Third and seven. Fields, pitch, Wade bounces back inside. Nice cut. He falls forward inside the 10. First down, Beavers. Nice run by Wade right there. Runs downhill. You know, got the positive yards, fought for the extra yards, make sure that the Beavers got the first down. Graham did a great job of covering that outside. They had the edge contained. Wade, great vision, cuts it back inside, falls forward, finishes the run, first and goal, Bluefield inside the 10. Graham's defense has been on the field a lot. And Bluefield trying to finish this drive. This play clock now at eight. Fields brings team to line four three pistol look low snap through the legs of field he falls on it oh it's still loose and Graham oh, will man. come up with the big turnover the snap went through sincere fields his legs and Caden Rodenberry falls on the football and Bluefield is dejected man We've seen bad snaps all night, both sides, and that one may be the most costly of them all. The thing that hurts the most, Zach, right there, is the Beavers have no timeouts now with 4.22 to go in the game. Look for the Graham offense to run the ball, to milk the clock, and stay in bounds, and try to run the clock out right here. And the way Jennings has been toting the load here the past couple of drives, I am sure he will eat Absolutely. right here. But Hughes is in the backfield to start this drive. First and 10 from the Graham 30. A slot and a receiver far side. Hughes, of course, gets the handoff. He falls forward up near the 31. Stays in bounds, of course. And it'll be second and long, and the clock is ticking near four minutes. Man, how big are those timeouts now? Nice to have them, have them right here to you know, stop the clock because I think the Beavers – uh, our defensive front is doing a good job of getting past the Graham offensive line to get in the backfield to, to get the running back before he gets going. Second and long here. Graham in really no hurry. I would suspect every snap from here on out for the G-Man will come with well under 10 under the play clock. Pistol look once more. Play clock at 10. Roberts. Snap. And off. Hughes again straight up the gut. And forward to the 35, and it will be third and about five. 325, clock ticking. Graham with the ball and a five-point advantage after a big turnover on what was the really the best drive of the night for Bluefield. Bluefield's defense needs a big play here. Third and five from the 35. Play clock at 15, really no quite hurry across the way. They may bleed this all the way down and then take a timeout because Graham has two in their pocket. With a five point lead, they're a little more adamant to use them and it looks like that's what they'll do here. So Graham uses their second timeout of the half. The G-Men have one timeout left. Bluefield without their timeouts. 2.46 remaining here in the fourth quarter. 
And it's the Graham G-Men 14, the Bluefield Beavers 9. Defense has got to come up with a big play here. Yeah, I think that was a crucial timeout for Graham because that previous drive, you know, you got a lot of guys going both ways for the Graham offense and the defense. So I think that might have been a good timeout to give them a breather. But, you know, the Beavers have had some issues to look like with hydration tonight. So this gives them also some chance to get some wind in their system and hopefully, you know, pull off a comeback right here. Yeah, we've seen some Ironman football tonight. We're the Cole Heritage Customs fourth quarter. It's been a fun one. Cole Heritage Customs, spruce up your ride at Cole Heritage Customs in Blue Well. Tires, wheels, all the accessories. Check them out at ColeHeritageCustoms.com. Rail yard post game coming up. We'll announce the Bluefield State Player of the Game and Great American Rivalry will give away a player of the game and we'll probably all coincide on the decision up here in the booth. But maybe the player of the game's not been named yet because there'll be a big third down coming right here. Looks like Middle backers for Bluefield trying to time up a blitz here. They do. Play action. Roberts keeps it, has the room to run. Near the 40, falls forward. The spot is important, and it looks like Roberts will get the first down. The sophomore quarterback, Dalton Roberts, has had himself a night. And right there, another big play by him. Keeps it on the option play falls forward and gets the first down. And I hate to say it, but that might just about do it. Yeah, I would say it would be pretty close for the Graham to clinch right here. You know, on that previous play, Graham tried to go to that earlier with the, with the quarterback, and he failed before he got going. First and 10, Graham from their own 42. Pistol look here. Snap, give off to Hughes. Hughes looking for room on the right side. He'll find it between the tackle and the guard, and he falls forward up near the 45, and he's bottled up there after about a three-yard pickup, and it'll be second and seven as the clock, who is the G-Men's best friend at the moment, rolls under two minutes. Yeah, I think the Beavers' defense right here, if they want to have a chance, they're going to have to try and punch the ball out from the, whoever the runner is to try and get the ball back with hopefully a little bit of time on the clock. A long third down play. Roberts connected with Graham on the 36-yard touchdown. The difference at the moment, 95 seconds left in the fourth. Second and a long five. The sophomore, Roberts, growing up right before our very eyes at the quarterback position for Graham. Snap good. Hand off again. Hughes straight up the gut. Plenty of room. He's looking for the end zone. 30, 25, 20, 15, 10. He's inside the 10. First and goal, Graham. He's on the carry for Graham. He takes it down to the 7-yard line. 48-yard run. Sean Hughes, and that may be the bow on the package tonight. Looks like Hughes is down right now. Let's he, pray that it's not serious. Hopefully, yeah, hopefully that's not serious. I think he may have got rolled up on after. Yeah, it looks like he got rolled up on after the play, so he is down and they'll attend to him. But man, what a run. 48 yards, Sean Hughes has Graham inside the 10. First in goal, G-Man with a minute 14 left. And we'll take the timeout with him. Injury timeout on the field. You're listening to Bluefield Beavers football on WKOI 100.9 FM. And of course, Great American Rivalry Series on SUV TV and HBCU Plus and Video Productions. So we'll keep it here because Hughes back up. He's getting some love as he should be after that big play. It'll be first and goal, and I would suspect the old victory formation for the G-Men. Yeah, this is the greatest formation in football if you're on the winning side of it. For the first time in this rivalry's history, Graham will win three in a row. This is the 97th matchup in this rivalry. It is just hard to fathom that with all those great Graham teams, this is the first time they'll win three in a row in this rivalry. I think what makes it even tougher to realize is, especially after Clements down, went down in the first half, 
for them to overcome adversity and find a way to score in the second half and take the lead and play good defense and, and, and capitalize on some turnovers from the Bluefield offense. Well, if you're out there listening as they take a knee, it'll be second and long. If you're out there listening, you said Graham's Tydras Clements and nothing else. I think that has been answered tonight. Yes. This I, team is deep. Yes, Daniel Jennings is a tough runner as well as Sean Hughes. I'm sure the Graham coaching staff will have to go to the chalkboard after this game to realize what they're going to have to do if, in case Clements' injury is long-term. Roberts takes another sap. It'll be third and goals. Actually, that might be that might be it as the final 15 seconds tick off the clock. Bluefield had their chances tonight, but fall short in the Battle of the Bluefields. The Graham G men will take this one. 14 to nine. We'll take a breath. We'll take a break. The Rail Yard Post Game Show right after this here on WKOY 100.9 FM. Video Productions and the Great American Rivalry Series. Hometown Service Center has made big improvements to the entire facility, much like the rebuilding a great football coach does each season. You work hard, make improvements, and create a winning team. Stop in before and after the games this season and stock up. At Hometown Service Center, we've revamped our store, renovated our bathrooms, installed new pumps, and now offer a dedicated island for easy access diesel fuel. Come experience the hometown difference at Hometown Shell at the corner of Stadium Drive and College Avenue. Don't wait until it's time to start back at school in the fall. Visit Blueprints Family Health today. We offer a comprehensive range of children's vaccines to ensure their well-being. Experience minimal wait times and swift service at Blueprints Family Health. Our medical professionals are here to provide efficient care, allowing you to get in and get out quickly. Your health is our priority, and we are committed to serving you. Check off your immunization list at Blueprints Family Health. Welcome back to Mitchell Stadium. Juno shot field down below. And a final here tonight. The Graham G-Men hold on for the 14-9 victory as we welcome you back inside the First Community Bank broadcast booth and the Rail Yard Post Game Show. If you're in the mood for great food or drink before or after the game, check out the Rail Yard on Raleigh Street in Bluefield. They've got signature plates and a full bar. You'll always find your favorites at the Rail Yard. Stop in or order online at railyardwb.com. Graham struck first in the first, 315 left in the quarter. Ty Dres Clements did what Ty Dres Clements has been known to do, a 45-yard run. PAT gave Graham an early lead at 7-0. It was back and forth throughout the end of the first and into the second, but Gerard Wade with a 62-yard run with 326 left in the first half. PAT tied it at 7. Graham was backed up and a couple of wild penalties on some bad formations on punt teams. Had them punting out of their own end zone. And a bad snap over the head of kicker Dylan Nash resulted in a safety for Bluefield with just under a minute to go in the first half. And the Beavers took a 9-7 lead in the locker room. It was a defensive struggle throughout the second half. Both teams punching each other in the mouth. But with 2.07 left in the third, on a long third down, the sophomore, Dalton Roberts, hooks up with Blake Graham from 36 yards out. And the PAT made it 14 to nine. The Beavers had a nice drive going there in the fourth, but a bad snap 
With through the legs, the quarterback Sincere Fields, and the G-Men came up with a fumble. Sean Hughes put the team on his back, got a couple of first downs, and then the G-Men just milked the clock out for the 14-9 final. And Rusty, you've won this game, you've lost this game. How does it feel being both teams down there right now? If you're the Graham G-Men, you're excited because now you have bragging rights for the next year. You know, this is the first time they've got a three-peat, um, you know, coming off a state championship year last year to start off this season. You're very excited. You're hoping that will sure continue the rest of the year. Here, so you know, the Blueville Beavers, the very disappointed. You know, you're, you're young. You want to improve, you know, tank. You know, they started off forward. slow last year, finished strong. You know, got a tough first round draw last year with Independence. Yeah. You know, took them to, you know, almost to the wire was the toughest opponent for the eventual state champion Independence Patriots. You know, so they made some mistakes tonight. I think they're going to have to go and work on that. But there was a lot of young guys that stepped up yes. in key moments. You know, especially, you know, Sin Sincere, who's, uh, who's a senior, never played the QB position in high school, never taken a varsity snap. Got out there, played pretty well. You know, they're going to have to work on the miscues, the communication, the substitutions, and just the turnovers in general. So about time now, Great American Rivalry. We, we kind of talked about it here in the booth, Great American Rivalry, and the Bluefield State University Player of the Game. Invest in your future with Bluefield State's alternative teaching certification or MBA program. You can check that out online right now at bluefieldstate.edu. And we've all kind of agreed Sean Hughes the running back linebacker the senior one played tremendous on the defensive side of the ball but man crunch time took the football made some tough runs hopefully he's okay after getting rolled upon on that big run that essentially gave Graham the opportunity to run out the clock but Sean Hughes had a great year last year he's Ladies up for another good year this year, and he is uh, our player of the game tonight, Sean Hughes. If you're watching, great run there by Hughes on the. That was the one that put the bow on it, man. But Hughes is queued up for a good year. We hope everyone who was injured tonight is, is going to be okay. Tydres Clements. I, I don't think anyone doesn't want to see that kid on the field, so we hope he's okay. Graham with a big test next week to go on the road at Galax, power in class one in Virginia. Bluefield, they have to regroup quickly. Another rival head to Princeton Friday. And the Tigers, which we'll see them tomorrow in Lincoln County. But the Tigers are primed for a good run for their own sake. Yeah, Dominique Collins is returning. You know, the kids going to some camps this summer and recorded a 4 2 40. Um, which is very impressive, especially for this local area. So if, if he gets in space with the ball and can make a juke and get upfield, he's going to be tough for the Beavers to stop. If the Beavers can defend him, they have a chance of, you know, going to Princeton, you know, start the season off with a win or gaining their first win and hopefully going one and one next week. Both teams with things to clean up. We'll be honest about it. It was scrappy and both teams battled. Graham wins it on the scoreboard 14 to nine here tonight. And for the first time, in this 97-year history of this rivalry, they have won three straight against Bluefield High School. It's just hard to put that into words. As tremendous as this rivalry been, this is the first time that the G-Men have won three in a row against Bluefield. But Coach Simon, the crew, back to work on Monday. Let's shout out, let's do our shout outs real quick. We had a great crew tonight. We had a couple of technical issues and everybody worked through them, and we made the best of, of a situation that we couldn't really overcome with our, our radio equipment. But uh, Ethan Stinson, on top of things, back in the station. Young man, you did a great job tonight. Matt Dill, thank you as well. Butch Mounts, offsite producer, thank you as well. Here in the stadium, Levi Barnhart on video productions, tremendous job. Marcus and Lisa Burnett, thank you guys for Great American Rivalry. They'll be here tomorrow on SUV TV and HBCU Plus with the Bluefield University Florida Memorial game. What time's that kick tomorrow? One o'clock, so you know you didn't get your football fixed tonight. So get out here at one o'clock or tune in on SUTV or HBCU Plus for that one as the Rams take on Florida Memorial. We had some great camera people as well tonight. Marianne Booth, Josh Watkins, Derek Wright, and Ahmad Taylor. Great views all night. Man, what a great crew we had 
And uh, shout out to all the sponsors on the radio. First Community Bank, Citizens Building Supply, Friendship Kia, Cole Chevy, Blue Prince Family Health, Hometown Shell, First Sentinel Bank, Bill Cole Audemars, Stevens Mitsubishi, Dairy Queen, Pepsi, MCMB Banks, Shell Advisory, Ramey Auto Group, The Vault, Cole Heritage Customs, The Rail Yard, and Bluefield State University. Go out and celebrate all the Beaver sports. They've got a big week coming up. Boys and girls cross country. Tomorrow at Woodrow, they'll be racing, hopefully early before it gets hot. Uh, boys and girls soccer in action. Boys soccer and Mercer Christian Monday. Girls soccer will host Pocahontas County tomorrow, and then they'll host Oak Hill Thursday. Volleyball in the Princeton Tournament tomorrow at Riverview Tuesday. And then golf will host Montcalm Monday and go to Princeton on Thursday. WKLY will be back on the air Friday at Princeton. 7 o'clock kick, an earlier kick than tonight. 7 o'clock kick, so 6.30 pregame show. We'll have our radio equipment fixed by then, we promise. But, Rusty, tremendous job tonight. Great having you in the booth with me. You bring a wealth of knowledge to not only the game, but this Bluefield Beaver program. And the listeners out there are, are blessed to have you apart. I'm glad uh, I could finally wrangle you in. <laughs> well, thank you for having me, Zach. You know, the first time I've ever done anything like this, hopefully I did okay hopefully there'll be room for improvement looking forward to this journey with you uh was honored to stand beside you and do this you were you're very fun to to work with we had fun tonight and, and some of the people listening may think this was the very first time i did a game so <laughs> and i apologize to gerard wade i had him and rj harrison mixed up but gerard uh, great night uh, i'm going to try to get the eights and the sixes corrected before next friday but man uh both these teams are have a, a bright future ahead of them the bluefield team they're young. They're going to get back at it. And we look forward to the progress from tonight to next Friday. We'll talk to you then on WKOY. Beaver fans, keep your head up. Tough fight tonight. But Graham holds on for the 14-9 victory. We'll see you next Friday in Princeton. Right here.